actually, I'm going to post a link before that. Yeah, last time I posted into the promotion, uh, into self promotion, in a place or two. I'm back. Okay. Uh, troubleshooting something. Let me know if you're starting up. I'll come back upstairs. Yeah, we'll get other people. Hello and welcome to Tomb of Annihilation, session four. This is actually our second session of the actual campaign. The group last time made their way to Fort Port Nyanzaru at the request of Archmage Cylindra Sylvain, Syndra Sylvain, whom they had previously worked with. They were requested to seek out evidence of a death curse and figure out what the cause was and hopefully put an end to it. So why don't you guys introduce yourself? We'll start with... Uh, I guess I'll go the order the video is on the screen. So Carlton, you're next. Up, oh, you're uh, muted. We can't, hear you. we can't hear you. Nope, no. still can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and so it begins. <laughs> Maybe he's not talking in the Discord? Let's try. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My name is Carlton, and I'm playing Mawin, a cleric of Tear. And next would be Eugene. Uh, my name is Eugene, and I'm playing Ears, the Tabaxi Rogue. And Arca. Uh, I am Arca. I am playing Thrak, a paladin of Kelimvor. Dragonborn. Scaly? I am Scaly, and I am playing Nexus, the uh, uh, gnome sorcerer. And Foshka? Uh, my name's Jeff. I'm playing Twillin, uh, a forest gnome druid. And Matt. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm playing Fixer, the Warforged Artificer. <laughs> Now, last time, once you got to the port, you were immediately inundated with new sights, smells, sounds, to the point where you were almost trampled by dinosaurs that happened to be racing through the streets. But luckily, you guys noticed that they were shouting at you to get out of the way in time. Asking around, there was a little bit of investigation to a few people, but nobody knows anything about this death curse that you've asked so far. 
nobody has been to any of the temples yet. Uh, it's kind of been a little bit of investigating people on the street. And none of them were of any help. Somebody did notice that you were new in town and figured that you had a little bit of muscle. So they asked you to help them recover a debt, which you did through some arm wrestling prowess. And that person that owed the debt, feeling ashamed for having to be hunted down to pay off that debt, asked if he could join you because his honor demanded it. And his name was Taban. No, hearing that you were going to be setting out into the jungle, he advised that you find a guide, to which you went to Jobol, Jobol, who is the merchant prince who all the guides in the city work for, or pay tribute to, rather. They have to pay tribute to him in order to work, so. And it sounded like you were set upon Azaka Stormfang. She did tell you to meet her the next day, the, the next morning, rather, at the Thundering Lizard when you were ready. Yep, that sounds right. And did you have any plans that night before? I think I'll be playing some games of chance with uh, folks in the, uh, in the inn, but other than that, no. We were going to do the shopping once we met up or beforehand? Because as a guide, I would think she would have a pretty good idea of what sort of equipment and such would make we sense. We purchased some of the equipment already. I don't know what else we are requiring. Well, that's why the guides. Yeah, we sort of already did that. Yeah, we did a lot of purchasing. Um, I think we were pretty much done with all the prep stuff. I, I think I just told everyone get some sleep because this is probably the last time we'll have a comfortable bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, and in there's a, also the long fact, time. Uh, well, there's also the fact that we hadn't really come up with which way we're taking quite yet. I and think that's why I wanted to go to did. the temple area and talk to some of the locals there to see if they have any information. Okay. Were you going to do that that night or the next morning? Uh, the next morning. But we had decided on a guide. I just can't remember the name of which one. Azaka Stormfang. Yeah, and we talked about, I believe, uh, heading over with help her with her quest. She needs to get something back. Yeah. Math. A family heirloom math. had been stolen. Yeah. Matt, since you missed it, if there's things that you want to purchase, some things that everybody else purchased were insect repellent. It came highly recommended. Um, given the way I am, I probably decline. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just one of those things. <laughs> they, they do carry uh, uh, diseases and other things that we cannot treat in the forest. So if you get sick, then you just die out there. Probably. Well, Fixer's also a Warforged, so. Oh, yeah, that's true. He's got no blood. I don't think. <laughs> Never mind. You're right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll need it for you. Correct. Good, 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 good. I don't think you've got any canoes yet. Canoes uh, hold believe... six people. Yeah, we still have yet to get the canoes. Yeah, we we'll probably need two, won't we? Probably. Well, it'd be a bit silly to buy them before we got to the river and prepare to go. I mean, where are we going to put them? We have to carry them. Around town? Oh, no, we're, no. We're we were... Forged. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we were going to buy them that night. We we're going to buy them right before we left. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Okay. Actually, the bookkeeping question, where are we keeping track of these things? 
just individually to some extent, or like we bought a certain amount of insect repellent. Are we all writing that down individually, or somebody keeping track of kind of party stuff, or what are we doing? I kind of what I've been doing, at least on the last thing I was, I was writing down anything we ever got. Um, so, I mean, if one person wants to do it, or if we all do it, I just need to know what we got. I'm, I'm fine either way. I just want to know if I need to be writing it down or if someone's keeping track of it. Wait, keeping track of what? So, like, all the information that we bought, for example, are we putting yeah, when, down, writing that down once for everyone yeah. or everybody? Yeah. When we were going the rounds and buying what we needed, uh, I I wasn't keeping track of what we got, but it was reputedly a group purchase. Yeah. Um. Actually, uh, can you give us a document for a, just like group inventory stuff so that we can add? You That'd want be a easy. Handout. Yeah, like a handout. Oh, that we can edit. That's a good idea. Yeah. How about a shared Google Doc? Uh, I. It's fine too, but the on the table we can work out just fine. You can just keep it in the the player handouts or with the character sheets. That's fine too. Do you it, want it named a mysterious note? No, like party party inventory uh, would be fine. And just put it with the character sheets. Yeah, that'll probably be the best place, and we can all edit it. Yep, it's down there. You can all see. Okay. It. You can all edit it. Let me. All right, Matt, you now have control of Fixer for a token on the table. All right. The character sheet should be down at the last section on that uh the document sheet i don't know how much of my other stuff you can see but character sheets should be at the bottom yep that's it so party inventory is fine things of significant weight should be tracked individually for purposes of, of encumbrance and also um, things that are um what's the word important degradable for instance say somebody has a bag of flour that they're carrying around it's nice to know which person is carrying around that way if they fall into the river they're the ones that have the glue in their sack. Are you calling Melon fat and kinky? <laughs> what in the name of Zeus? <laughs> All right. So that night before hanging, uh, before bed, Nexus gnomes are not the most common species in Port Nanzaru. You have seen a few of them. So as such, when you're just kind of in the tavern, you get some strange looks occasionally, not often. And people aren't rude about it. You know, they kind of look at you, see the gnome, uh, look around curiously to the point, but they don't sit and stare too long. But it's, it's as one of those times you, you're somebody just happens to catch your your attention as they kind of glance at you mid conversation with the person next to them. And they're talking about uh, what you hear is give me a perception roll. I did a roll. Uh, 
No, it did not. Okay, hold on. Jeffrey just faded. There it goes. Okay. So, 14. I'm, I'm telling you, thousands of warriors killed and died for her, and the only memorial of her reign is in the Garden Palace in Nangalore. No, no, she is not the most beautiful queen of, of Chult. Yes, yes, she is. There's been others, but Zalkoria has been the most beautiful queen. She should have more, more memorials throughout the land, but I tell you, there's only the one. Nangalore, you say? I have not heard of Nangalore. Oh, it's uh, on the eastern shores by the by the river Olung. Uh, oh, I think north of Lake Luo. And and how long ago did she rule Chult? Oh, it's it's been a few decades. <sighs> yeah, why have I not heard of her then? At which point they kind of changed the topic. Um, <clears throat> Eastern Shore. Um, I don't. I don't think I recognize any of those names from our map that I can recall. Say, I don't even see a lake. <laughs> so he's naming things that we don't know. Of. I didn't even hear that conversation. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. I will. I will go up. Uh, I will walk up. Uh, I, uh, there are two men. Yes, two men. Okay. I apologize, gentlemen. I didn't mean to, uh, eavesdrop, but, uh, your conversation was a little loud. I was curious about these, um, places that you were talking about, this goddess that you were talking about. God. Oh, the queen? Queen. I'm sorry. I apologize. Are you a scholar? Of sorts. So tell, tell this, this buffoon here how beautiful Zalkore was. Ah, I am new to this land. So I am just learning these stories myself. So why don't you tell me the story oh. of... Well, she was... They... Some, some say that she was exiled, but I do not believe it. She was too good of a queen. They say her great great niece is the current ruler. I think I I don't know. I lost track after. Ruler of 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 Chult of the jungle of the peninsula. Oh, oh! Does she have a seat of power somewhere? He kind of stops and thinks. I. I guess it would be Nangalore, where the memorial of in her in the Garden Palace. Oh, where's Nangalore? I don't think I've been there. I've, I've, uh, we're actually looking to, uh, to do some exploring, and maybe I can uh, stop and see this. Guy. Well, it is south of here. Um, but but to the river Olung does not reach Port Nyanzaru. If, if you went to uh, Refuge Bay, if you if you caught passage on a ship and landed in Refuge Bay, then roughly west, maybe 70 miles? Hmm. Okay. And so there'll be a river in that area somewhere that we would eventually... Oh, the river, he stops and thinks, it, it, uh, the river actually lets out in the ocean far north of there. Um, if, if you go to, uh, have you been, have you been to the ruins of Mesro? No, but I do know their location. Mesro is on, on the shores of the river Olang. So if you, oh, if you found yourself so in Mesro. 
then you could follow the the river. So, if, oh, stream. so if you kept following that river down, it would it would run into this this other city. Yes, I keep forgetting have... the name. Can you type in the name in the thing? Type. What is this type you? <laughs> <talking>? <laughs> Oh, uh, Nangalar, yes. Okay, so, so this Nangalar is, will be towards, um, if you keep heading south, basically, it will it will run into the... Yes, a, a small tributary. It, you should be able to see it from the main river, unless you get lost. It's easy to get lost in the jungle, but... Oh, obviously. Hmm, well, thank you. And uh, if I do happen to see this uh, statue, I will come back and uh, tell you all about my experiences in this city. And Please do. Um, but you said her, there is somebody ruling there, a, uh, like a, a, a descendant. Um, I don't know if she rules from Nangalore or not. I have heard very little. Okay. I, I don't even forgive me. I don't even remember her name. It has been so long since I heard it. That is fine. That is fine. I I will. Uh, I would be interested in meeting such a person. But uh, thank you for your assistance. Uh, good good day, John. See. She believes me. <laughs> All right, so so we know Nangler somewhere in that area. All right. Cool. All right. So the next morning, did you wish oh, to I, go? I, oh, go ahead. I will also pay for a bath before we leave, just because it's probably the last good bath I'll. You want to go to the bath? Okay. Yeah, I'll go to the bath. Let me put you guys on the city map. She'll get up <laughs> super early to go to the bath. Do tabaxi bathe or lick themselves? <laughs> <laughs> More than likely, I, they bathe. <laughs> disturbing. It's a lot of surface area. They probably lick each other. A communal thing. Uh, like, but, but the Tabaxi's alone. There's nobody, no, nobody to lick and lick back. It's sad. I'm, I'm sure there are special gonna... areas of the city where you can find that sort of service. I think not Tabaxi can even find that service. <laughs> we're going to the jungle, so I think we're going to have to just rely on you know team members there. <laughs> no, no, I am not, not licking him. <laughs> not. War, war force does not have a tongue. So there are two bathhouses. Um, there is the public bathhouse, which is over. It helps if I have the right pointer selected. I bet the warforged could uh, craft an artificial tongue. <laughs> over here on All the right, north anyway. side of town. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Mm -hmm. There is also the Temple of Sunni. A temple? Yes. Wait, I didn't see that one. Where's that at? I'm finding it. It is... Up on the upper right corner. Oh, it's like out there. Um, one of those temples. You gotta remember that Sune is not a native god of Chult. It's right. one of the realms gods. The native gods temple area is actually where I wanted to go to. I wanted to check out Sune as well, but. I figured uh, lore and legend from the local gods might give us an idea of where to look for um, 
some sort of undead artifact type thing. I don't know. It sounds kind of like a waste of time to me. I mean, I'm not sure those local gods are going to be that useful. The gods may not be useful. Their history books might be. I don't know. Could you really trust their history books? Didn't, didn't this start like just a little while ago? For us, yes. For them, who knows? Well, I mean, you could read about the Necromancer, right? And and there could be some cool stuff you find out there. But I mean, in terms of the artifact we're looking for, this all started just recently. Right. Okay. But what if it had happened before at a much localized level? We would have never heard of it. Um... Uh, I don't. Oh, wait, Suni, which uh, what's the goddess? Of, what goddess is she? I can't remember. Should know this. Love and beauty. Yeah. Okay. One of those things. Uh. Yeah. No. She'll just stick to the public bathhouse. I don't think she wants to deal with the island of Har- Harlotry. The yeah. I, I'm not sure what she'll she'll see there, and I don't know if she'll be thrilled about what she sees there. So. Since you've now been in town for two days? No, this is the third day. Well, this will be the third day. Yeah, correct. You have all noticed by now that most of the residents that walk through the city are very clean. Most of them smell well-perfumed, very clean. There's, There's not really that stink of old sweat. Among most people, I mean, now where there's laborers and stuff, that's different. But it seems like uh, the bathhouse is very popular. Sweet. Yeah, I'll go to the, the public bathhouse. I'm not. Public bathhouses aren't on. Shouldn't be that. Um, if someone wishes to join me, I will offer. Yes, this one is the biggest one. There are dozens of smaller ones, but they are like private clubs. You know, you may see a small bathhouse on a side street, but it's only certain people allowed, right? You're not a member yeah. of that particular group, so they don't let you, and they tell you to go to the public one. Uh, at the public one, you see, um, just on your way up there, a mix of what looks like well-to-do people walking in and out of the, there, as well as the poor. Hmm. Uh, a wealthy... Um, Doc Merchant seems to be walking in at the moment, as well as a few people that look like they're fresh from the refuse pits are also walking in at the same time and conversing with each other, too. Okay. Very uh, interesting sort of egalitarian sort of thing, Gary. All right, that's fine. I'll go ahead and walk in. Uh, Was anyone coming with me? I would have. Did anyone want to come with me to the bathhouse? Enjoy a good bath before we get out into the into the uh, jungles for um, possible. No. I wonder nope. if they have equipment for cleaning. Um, uh, cleaning uh, one's equipment to to ready it for the. Oh, um, I don't think they would have it there. You'd probably, depending on what kind of equipment, I mean, your clothes, maybe, but bath, public bathhouses don't usually have equipment cleaning stuff. Not that I'm aware of, anyways. But, okay, so no one else wants to get a good bath. Jeez, you guys are just going to no, be I'll smelly come. and nasty later. It's... I, I'm coming. Don't worry, you will be too. That's not the point. At least I'm starting it, out. It literally rains every afternoon here. <laughs> Fine. And morning and evening. <laughs> are, are you sure it's not raining now? <laughs> That's the thing. You you go to the bathhouse and it rains on you like five minutes later. It's guaranteed. It is currently rainy. That's fine. But no, right. I'll, I'll go with the, the gnome. All right. Yeah, that's right. Come on, let's do So you two are going there. Uh, Ears, what are you doing first thing in the morning? Ears is probably going to kind of uh, get his um, 
uh, bearings around the city, find a high place to look from and get a better idea of the layout. Climb up on something. Um, I think I think the decision uh, is bathing is not uh, something he would be interested in. Um, unless the whole group was going, then he would may take along for social purposes. <clears throat> but yeah, kind of see what, what what's around, explore a little bit while everybody else is okay. off to the bathhouse. One bit of information or you overhear is that the great god Ubtau once guided the people of Chult, but he tired of their constant warring and abandoned them. Since then, Chultans have turned to the worship of other gods, some of which were tricksters and deceivers. Are there, like, temples to these other gods around the city, or...? No, they don't have temples. Um, they do have, like, small personal shrines, but these, these so-called trickster gods don't have temples. But we were told of, I want to say, two clerics, not clerics, two priests of other gods, not necessarily the trickster gods, because there was Sune, but there were two other priests mentioned to us specifically. Uh, the, the gods abandoned Chult or something? It wasn't just this one god, it was other gods as well? But other than that info, is there any district in particular Ears would be looking for? Or hanging out in? Like the docks uh, or the uh, the uh, market? Probably, probably look around the docks because he has the background that would want him to know how that sort of um, organizations work around here. And yeah, I see Tsune, Savras, Gond, and Taimora were the temples around the city. It seems. Yeah, he'll check out the docks so he is, you know, familiar with that, um, with the criminal um, workings. So he wants to orient himself to know what things not to do based on his assessment and what things to stay clear of. Okay. So at the docks. What is your passive perception? Uh, 16. Yep, yeah, 16. And uh, do I have that yet? I have something. Uh, also, um, I do know Thieves Can't, if that comes into play. Okay. So one thing you notice with your 13. 16. 16. Let me see if I have a handout for you. You see on the docks, and he seems to be uh, shouting orders and walking up and down up and down the uh, the pier a few of the piers anyway some people are asking him questions and he stops and shouts you see that 
Dragonborn or something different? Could be different, could be Dragonborn. Um, but not something. Well, I'll I, I'll see what that that if that's something new. But you see, he, you know, he yeah. is uh, yelling at certain people. A boat uh, looks like a ship is getting ready to unload, and he's shouting at them, "Not yet!" You know, they need to wait their turn for the proper authorities or whatever. At which point, some kid goes running up to him and and tugs on his his sleeve, and they have a quiet conversation. And then you see him cast a spell. Um, do you have Arcana? And no. Okay. So you don't really know what spell he casts, but he stops, you know, nods to the, the kid, casts the spell, which takes a moment, and uh, seems to be muttering to himself very briefly. And then he talks to the kid again, and the kid takes off running, satisfied of something. Okay. Um, so my guess would be like a dock master or something. Yeah, he seems to be performing that role. Okay. Um, if there is nothing particularly interesting about what he's doing or about him, if he's some sort of um, race that Ayers hasn't encountered before, he would be curious to have a closer look. Yeah, he, he it looks like a dragonborn, but then again there are you have a dragonborn in your party and there are significant differences. Um well, I guess Ayers will just sit perched on top of something some roof edge and observe for a bit. You know, this one he, he has the horns coming out the side of his head which Thrak mm -hmm. doesn't have. Uh, also his uh, snout coming off the, the mouth and chin, the tendrils there. So he, it seems draconic of some sort, but maybe it's a different breed of dragonborn. But, you know, he's, he doesn't sit still either. After he wanders off and yells at certain people, he kind of keeps going down the docks and come, go disappears out of sight. Um, there's nothing better to do than uh, I'll follow along, rooftop to rooftop. Are you sneaking? Um, yeah, probably keeping out of sight. Okay. Let's see, so that's ears. Thrak and Nexus are going to the baths. What about Malwin? I think I was going to do some window shopping for canoes. I know we were talking about picking some up, maybe, but uh, I don't think we'd actually done any looking. So I was going to spend some time uh, checking to see what sort of canoe options we have available to us. All right, canoe. The market has several people that sell canoes. They all seem mostly the same. And each one of the stalls that does sell canoes seems to have the same um, merchant mark on their stall. The same what also? The same merchant's mark. Gotcha. Um, the canoes sell for 50 gold pieces. They hold six pe six medium creatures. Yeah. 
And if you would like, I mean, looking around, there are others that do sell some slightly larger that hold eight for 100 gold pieces. We've got six people in our group. Plus a guide and a oh, shamed yeah. gladiator that likes to... Yeah, so maybe... Do we want two canoes, maybe? Probably two. Then if there's a problem with one canoe, then we can all cram into one, but, uh, you know. You could. It'd be uncomfortable, but yes, you could. And if we're incredibly lucky, we'll have extra room for artifacts and piles of gold. <laughs> oh, one thing I forgot to mention with uh, the Warforge is he does have a decently sized robotic creature with him. So yeah, oh, you'd probably yeah, that's too. a big deal. So yeah, it sounds like we do will need two uh, six person ones. I'll look around see if there are any interesting canoes with options, things like live wells for fish or or sealed compartments for uh, for stuff that might not want to get rained on or accidentally dunked if we go under a waterfall or something. Uh, you know, I'm I'm doing my due diligence on uh, on canoe shopping for everybody. You know, while other people are out, you know, frolicking with uh, alternative gods or uh, or getting themselves washed. I go see the alternative gods in the morning. I I realize theirs would actually want to go see the dinosaurs. Uh, you do find some canoes that do have a carved well on the side. Um, some of them seem smaller to hold bait. A few of them do have a like a side, almost like a carved out knot. There may have been a knot in the wood, so they carved out a hollow on the side. So it misshapes the canoe just slightly, but you do find some that do hold fish um, that you can then cover up again. A special modded canoe like that would cost 5% more. All right. Well, I will make a note of that for when we need to do make our canoe purchases in the future. Sorry, 5% more per mod. So 5% for a fish well, 5% for a kind of a overhanging side that you could then tuck something under so it would be water resistant. You said there were 50 gold, so it would be 55 gold for one with those fun options? Both of those? Two and a half gold each. Yeah, 55 for one with both options, yes. Cool. And I'll look around, see, you know, if there's, if anything else catches my eye, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, that's, uh, I think, what I'll be spending my time until we're planning on meeting up at our prearranged meeting point in time. I assume we have one of those. Um, while you're shopping for fish, and, I mean, shopping for canoes with the fish options, you hear a, a strange story that somebody is warning you. Make sure you do not overfish any particular rivers. Long ago, there was once a peaceful tribe of fisherfolk called the Aldani. They angered Ubtau by catching and eating all the lobsters in a river. As punishment for their greed, they were all transformed into monsters that dwell in the Aldani Basin. So remember, only take what you need. So you say there are monsters in the Aldani Basin, huh? Yes. What kind of monsters? The only reports we have are that they look like giant lobsters. Well, that seems appropriate. Do they go well with butter? I don't know. I don't think because you know has it eaten sounds one. like they're it sounds like they're out of lobsters in the area. So we might have to look into that. And we might have to bring extra stock of lobsters if we're going to the or not lobsters uh, extra stock of butter if we're going to the Aldani region. I'll make a note of that. So of course, we wouldn't want to kill all of them because, well, then, you know, we might be turned into lobsters to make up for the, uh, you know, missing monsters. Yes. That is one thing Ubtau does, but alas, it has been a while since Ubtau's presence has been seen. Perhaps you know who has back. been showing a strong presence in the region lately? Tyr. <laughs> Tyr? Yes, the great oh. god Tyr. Yes, I have heard the people from the Order of the Gauntlet talking about Tyr. May the blessings of Tyr be upon you, and I'll cast guidance on him. Why, thank you. 
I've got to do my part to uh, to bump up the number of folks following Tear in the area. <laughs> I think we'll have a pleasant conversation for uh, for the rest of my time uh, chatting uh, chatting about Tear before I have to rush off to meet up with the uh, the rest of the group. Okay, Twillin. Taban finds you because he couldn't find anybody else, so he is following you around. Uh, okay. Um, is he just curious about what Twillin is doing? He, Yeah, he's curious seeing what you're doing. He's also uh, doesn't want to lose the rest of the group. Okay. Uh, Twillin is uh, intent on finding out where they lock up and torture these poor dinosaurs so that he can possibly set them free. So he's looking for the dinosaur torture pen. All right. Are you asking or are you just wandering around looking? He's asking. And he'll use that word, too. Excuse me, have you, have you seen any place where they torture dinosaurs nearby? Where they torture dinosaurs? Yeah, they, they, they lock them up and they tie them up and then they force them to uh, run these terrible uh, uh, races. That's not torture. What else would they do right. with them if not race them? We wouldn't right. want to have Tell to slaughter backs them. Away. So Ellen looks at him like he's a horrible person and backs away slowly. And then goes and asks somebody else. Uh, Taban is laughing at this. And why? Why are you worried about dinosaurs? They forced dinosaurs to run us down as soon as we got here. Those poor beasts. Driven insane. Driven in, insane. That's not what I've. Well, they, they're penned. Well, why in, else would they do that? They're penned in the Tariki Anchorage. Here, I'll show you where they are. You know where? Twin yes. is like, really? You know where they are? Show me. Yes, I know where they are. He kind of leads you uh, past the market ward, past the Grand Bazaar, or the, uh, yeah, the Red Bazaar. And over this way, through a uh, gate in the wall. And he kind of leads you out in that direction. The they are over system. here. It would be yeah, south southeast. Southeast. Since north That's is water. facing right. Oh. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, there are a lot of river folk, and seems like people that are, are rough and tumble, adventurer types out here that maybe they don't have enough money to stay at one of the taverns, so there's a lot of people um, huddled on sides of the roads or whatever. There's also, uh, just in general, you notice people uh, engaging in, in trade and barter. And Taban kind of doesn't look, he's making it obvious that he's avoiding looking in their direction type of thing. And he kind of leads you over uh, further south to where the dinosaurs are penned. Yeah. Okay. And you can actually see in some of the pens down here, there are, um, and one just so happens that there's a guy standing there with young Triceratopses. He's kind of whistling at him and waving their his their hand his hand to get their attention as they kind of run around in certain patterns. Okay. Um, are there any small... We'll start with small. Are there any small dinosaurs? There are some small dinosaurs, young dinosaurs. Okay. Twilin is going to strike up a conversation with a couple of them and find out uh, which are the horrible torturers. Who he needs to track down. Tor torturers? Yeah, ask the animals. Feeders? They feed us?
Maybe they're just like getting you ready to torture. Well, I I I haven't been tortured yet. Hey, have you been tortured yet? And the other one next to him snorts. No, we haven't been tortured yet. What's this torture like? Uh, they uh they uh tie you up and then they they force you to run really fast and 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 well, how can we run drive really you? fast if we're tied up if we're we, we've been tied up before but we couldn't move that sounds like torture to me oh well i i I, I heard from one of the big ones that it was a good thing we couldn't move because they had to, they had to, um, um, what did they do? They had to defend their territory. And we would have been in the way if we had been able to move. Defend their territory from what? Um, um, the stinky ones. Stinky ones. Yeah, they, they, mm. they smell like they, like they, like they should be still on the ground. What, like, like, like dead things? Dead. What is dead? No. If you, you should know what dead is. I mean. Animals that have been lying there, you know, nobody's yes, eaten still them, on the ground. so they've been laying there too long? Yes, yeah. still on the ground. Not moving. Okay. Stinky. Uh, Twillin will confirm this with the other creatures so that he can talk to. Uh, he's limited in terms of the the size with just his basic abilities, but um, uh, uh, before he he considers coming back later with like speak with animals, he's probably just going to be gathering information from the little ones first. Yeah, the little ones are very naive, very inexperienced. Uh, a lot of yeah. them can't wait until they get the the nice bright colors put on their sides, and they get to go running through the streets too. They've heard good stories from the bigger ones. What good stories? What's good about it? That it's fun. Although sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes the people that ride the other big ones, they get a little too mean, but not often. At which point, okay. the, uh, the guy that was over towards the center kind of notices you and kind of walks up. Good morning. Morning. You interested in buying? No. Oh. I'm just making sure that they're not being tortured. No, we wouldn't torture them. Too valuable to torture. You know... That's the first thing someone has said to me today that I agree with. Well, if you need any help, let me know. He kind of gives you a suspicious eye, but, you know, wanders back to his training. Okay. All right. So, Fixer. Everybody's kind of left you alone because you don't need a bath. Uh, given the state of the weather and the affairs, he's spending his time making sure that uh, there won't be any complications out while he's out and about. What kind of complications are you on the lookout for? So anything that potentially make it to where he can't move. Um, you are warned that there are some swamp marsh areas. Uh, you don't look like you're too maneuverable in that type of thing. You might sink and get stuck in the, the bogs. But for the most part, a lot of people kind of avoid you. 
At one point, uh, a young uh, wizard walks up towards you. Very curious. He kind of looks at you and slowly walks around you. I wonder who has left this golem here. Or perhaps a... Hmm... Can I help you? Oh, you speak. And then he kind of looks around the room, almost looking for somebody that might be speaking through you. I don't know. Can you? I can't offer a solution if you don't tell me a problem. Very curious. It is, is... I guess right now it would be that I have never seen anything like you. Well, that's not entirely true. I've seen uh, others like you, but they were constructed and commanded. Yet I don't see anybody nearby that would hold your command amulet are you self autonomous just as much as you are fascinating well uh, in that case I, I don't wish to no I, I truly do wish to keep bothering you but uh, I, I will let you go I am I am sorry for disturbing you are there more like you there's quite a few just not around here yes I've never seen anything like you around here before Can I can I buy you a drink? Uh, do do you drink? No, sadly I do not. That's one thing I'm capable of. Oh. Pity. And, and he seems like he he wants to stay around and ask a bunch of stuff, but he's trying to fight with himself to not be rude about it. And at one point, one of his companions kind of his companions walks up and grabs his arm and C come on, we have we have to be somewhere. Why why are you? C come on. And he gets pulled away. Picture just kind of waves and goes back on. Yeah, his you know walk research figuring out you know the area. All right, Thrak and Nexus. The uh, the bathhouse is free, but you are encouraged to leave a donation based on your station, befitting your station in life. And you know that you've noticed that even the the poorest of the poor that walk through drop a copper piece in the big clamshell that's by the entrance as they walk in. And you also have the option of hiring a masseuse or masseur as well, but their fees are, they actually do have fees for their services. So decide that, and then we will jump ahead a little bit. Uh, well, I chose a modest lifestyle for myself, so I will uh, pay a gold piece. Um, uh, she's, I mean, we'll be in the jungles for a couple of months. She's got no real reason to hold on to this money too long. So she'll, she'll throw a couple of gold pieces in there and she will go ahead and hire a masseuse. Why not? That sounds amazing. She's going to splurge on her. The, 
the masseuse you hire is 11 silver pieces, and it is well worth it. Awesome. You know what? I'll splurge as well. Why not? There you go. See, look. Come on. You got this. Yours is 10, and they assure you it's not any change in quality or whatever, but this particular person happens to know that certain areas of a dragonborn's body are not as receptive to massage, so they don't they know not to waste time on areas that aren't going to matter and you know you go in for a massage you see warm oils and whatnot i go in for a massage you see hammers and sledgehammers there you go maybe, maybe a crowbar pumice stone <laughs> that, that that means the person knows what they're doing you should be very proud yep all right so after everybody's it's like, whoa i'm not finished. that kind of dragon board folks <laughs> were you guys going to meet up at your end and then go to the Thundering Lizard, or just kind of make your way towards the Thundering Lizard? Uh, I think we were all going to just make our own way there once we're done with doing whatever we're doing. I, I don't think we made any plans to to meet up otherwise. Okay. So around the appointed time, or what you think is the appointed time fixer, you kind of head down the road a little bit towards the Thundering Lizard, where there is a uh, kind of like a wooden A-frame board on the outside that seems to be written in a chalk. Uh, get your signed copies. Volathamp's Guide to Monsters, sold here. 50 gold pieces. And you actually hear from inside uh, a rather loud voice Uh, no, no, a ask me a different question. Yes, I, ha I have seen everything in the book. I have seen, I have met many different creatures. And inside, there seems to be like a temporary stage set up where there is a guy standing on the, the stage. Looking like... Are like we all together now? Not yet. Fixer is the first one in. No, I cannot tell you everything in the book. Otherwise, how will I sell the books? If you need to know everything, you can buy the books. Book on what? And then seeing Fixer walk in, he kind of stops. Now you, I have never seen before. Come, come, come up here. Uh, Fixer will make his way up to, to the front. Please, up on the stage, up on the stage. It should support you. Are, are you a... a golem? No. No, I have seen golems before. You are not a golem. You are... What are you? Is this armor? And he kind of knocks slightly on your shoulder. I, I, I must know. I must know. But first, for you, because I have never seen one of your kind before. And he, he pulls out a book from a, stamp, from a stack next to him and grabs a, a quill and opens up the page and kind of with a flourish signs it. A signed copy for you. Thank you. And people cheer and somebody else stands up. I, I, you haven't seen anything like me before. Yes, yes, I have. Perhaps I should have done that in private. He kind of shakes his head and face, face palms. Uh, 
And you notice, um, now that you're up here on the stage, kind of looking around, you can see over everybody, in a corner, kind of looking very annoyed and frustrated, is Azaka kind of sitting by herself, trying to be as far away from everybody as she can, and failing because it's fairly packed in here. Uh, I'll just take the book, kind of doing a quick thumb through, and I'll make way, way over to her. It is, it details a lot of monsters across the Faerun. So if you want to spend time reading about, reading through things, I will let you know what you uh, discover or, you know. If you come across something and want to take a few actions to look and see if it's in the book, I will let you know. Okay. All right. And then you all kind of manage to make your way in and see this guy up on the stage talking about different books, or different monsters, sorry. Why is it I have the image that we will be in a fight being chewed up on, and he's going to be looking up the book going, No, quit stabbing it! Quit stabbing it! It's immune to piercing! <laughs> what other books does he speak of? Oh, he has a stack of this one book. Oh, okay. And as more people come in, you know, he kind of resets his spiel. I am on tour from the mainland, from the north, selling these copies. I have already delivered shipments to the merchant princes, and I had left over, so I decided to come and see if anybody else would like to buy. Only 50 gold pieces for a durable need. Knocks on it. Hard cover book. want to know and he picks one up and kind of flips through ah, my browser froze is it waterproof uh, the cover might be if you get a few splashes dried off quick enough it should be okay but no you should not dunk it in water yeah, but it's going to rain any minute. No, not in here. And he looks up at the, the ceiling. You are perfectly fine reading about reading in, in here. Thanks. And he kind of flips one through up one. And reading it. Uh, <clears throat> they are for sale. You just said I could read it. No, I said you would be fine reading one in here if you owned one. Right, I'll read it right here. Um, <laughs> and that would be 50 gold pieces. Uh, that doesn't sound perfectly fine to me. He kind of looks at you sideways. Surely you know what purchasing is, right? Yeah. So these are, are for purchases. But not for reading in here. If you buy one, yes. Should have said that before. I didn't think I had to. So how much do you charge per page? I don't sell by the page. That makes the rest of the book worthless. Would you like to buy one or not? Trillin puts it back on the stack. I must watch my wording, apparently. Um, as you guys walk in, uh, some of you notice more soon, more quickly than others that Azaka seems to be 
kind of relieved that you're there, yet more frustrated that you still aren't leaving. But I assume you all eventually huh? get to the table. Yeah, oh, here's you on your table. Too many people. Yeah, um, we will. We will all eventually get to the table. <laughs> yeah, I'll. Um, if yours gets there before the rest of the party and uh, notices that Azaka feels uncomfortable, he's gonna kind of look over and say, "Anxious to leave." Yes, I, I do not like these crowds. There are too many people in here. No. Oh. But I did tell you Seven. I would meet you here, so I stayed. Well, what do you have against crowds? Uh, in general, nothing if they are kept away from me. I like a little bit of room to breathe, I guess. Ah. Uh, well, we could probably wait outside for others. Well, We're here. Are already over there talking to that fool. <sighs> but yes, maybe outside would be better. I'll go fetch him. All right. So eventually now everybody is outside. She has on a small backpack. Uh, she has two scimitars at her hip and a longbow kind of slung over her back with a quiver. Are we leaving now? I do not know. I am ready to leave when you are, though. I thought we were ah. leaving. <laughs> uh, yes, I believe we'll double check uh, canoes. We have them now. I have found some excellent canoes we can purchase. I didn't have the money on me to purchase them at the time, but I believe we uh, all together have enough money for them. Okay. Do you mind if we uh, go and get those canoes first, then, and then we will head out? Not at all. I will meet y'all at the gate. She, okay. she follows you. I need to go to the temples. I wish to research the history. Uh, she kind of looks between you. I know very little of the temple, so I will stay with them in Taban. I can show you which temples. Which temples are you looking for? Uh, as many as there are. I know of the Temple of Sune, and I believe you mentioned two others to us a while back. Sabra's gone in Taimora, I believe. At least according to my notes. Um... But also, any of the temples or uh, churches to the gods of Chult? No, they do not have any. Uptau has abandoned Chult, and the, the gods that were moved to were worshipped after he left, uh, their shrines are not in the city. I have heard that they do have shrines elsewhere in ancient cities, but not here. This is a city of settlers and immigrants. There are temples to foreign gods here. Ah, so they wouldn't have any history of Cholt, would they? No. What are you what history are you looking for? Um well 
you mentioned the city suffered from undead attacks. A bell would ring and the guard would yes, charge yes. to the... I was just curious if such attacks had occurred before in earlier times. Times maybe not even the current residents would ever remember. Well... Perhaps Tolt was ruled by an uh, undead lord of some sort, or or a conqueror of undead, uh, with undead armies. I know that... Wait, out of, out of character, didn't we already hear about the necromancer that tried to take over? Yeah. Okay. And that's what he's gonna. And there's no one here who would, who has any history about those events. Mm, it happened so long ago. Perhaps some of the merchant princes might, but I wouldn't know who. Then I'm ready to go. I just wanted to try to put a better destination than that. And I'm pointing at the jungle. Ah, yes. Well, it is my understanding that the last town associated, the last city associated with the necromancer Rasnasi was Mesro. Uh, he was trying to take over Mesro. Well, I believe that my party and I will always be grateful for your time and guiding us around the city, but I do not wish to ask something of you that I really wouldn't ask of much of anybody except for an expert of the jungles, as since we are going out into them. I believe your debt is paid. Does all agree? Mm -hmm. He kind of gives you a stern look. Uh, forgive me, but I will decide when my debt is paid. Do we have room in the canoe for him? Yes, we need to take two canoes. Because uh, without two, we won't have enough room for all the piles of gold we'll be taking back with us. You are a strange one. What, you don't want room for gold to carry it home? Piles of gold are pretty healthy. I feel healthy. sorry. I feel sorry for you. I can take your gold that, if you I, don't want it. And, and with that, I just I can help to the guide and. Well, let's get moving. Once we're in the jungle, we'll chuckles. find out what it's like. So, are you getting the two canoes then for fifty-five gold each? Yep. And you can see, I found some with uh with uh, fish wells here so that we can uh, fish for food along the way and store the uh, the fish we catch. Um, and uh, they also have uh, uh, sealed uh, uh, containers here. So if we have anything particularly uh, damaging or, or, or fragile, we can store it in there safe from the water. Ah, oh, good thinking. All right, so and see. since we keep uh, picking up uh, new people along the way, uh, I figured uh, having seating for 12 would probably, even if we don't use it for gold, then uh, we might be able to use it for uh, the friends we meet along the way. True. You never know. Now, does anybody have proficiency in vehicles? 
specifically a canoe. Oh, oh yeah, learning how to drive one. It's not necessary, I'm just asking if anybody does. I have survival, does that count? No. Nope, I do not have nope. proficiency in driving a vehicle. I am not meant for uh, water. Okay. So without proficiency, we're going to say you can't make a fast pace. You can travel at a normal or a slow pace, though. The rivers do not move very fast at all. So with the exception of a few places, you will have to get uh, onto shore because water levels change and there are some waterfalls of varying heights. So you'll have to get onto shore to trek up since you are traveling upstream. Hey, does anybody have a good performance skill so they can get a whole cadence going with some drums? <laughs> I Sorry, my we didn't bring a bard on waiting. this party. Oh, man. That, that will be our downfall. <laughs> no bard. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure with my minus one, we'll be uh, without rhythm. How about a good intimidation skill? That might work the same. Stroke! Stroke! <laughs> I think I have enough insight to look into that and be like, no, that ain't going to (laughs) work. I guess we are out of luck. We're not going to be able to canoe very well. All right. We'll be fine. The first day is uh, is us spending time in the circle in the city (laughs) as we try to go down down a river. Oh, that's a problem. We're We're trying to get up the river. (laughs) uh, Actually, that's a good question. Is it downstream or upstream we're trying to go? It's going to be upstream. Rivers drain to oceans, not the other way around. Yeah. I'm sure Azaka can show up the basics of how to operate a canoe to those of who haven't before. Luckily, canoes aren't exactly tough to figure out, so it shouldn't take us. Yes, you keep saying that as we're spinning in circles. She knows the basics. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we're still going to make better time doing this than, than walking through the forest. Definitely a lot less tiring. Taban knows the basics as well. Any exercise you can do sitting down is much better than uh, stuff you have to do standing up. I don't know if I would agree. But we are where we are. So we're going to need a marching order. I'll be in the front canoe. Uh, Yeah, we'll have to figure out which canoe we're in. And for that, let me pull you over here. What the heck? Okay. I think we're seeing things we're not necessarily... The mouse... Damn it. Seeing like I'm a seeing yeah, a I see a flask of wine, room. and... That might I'm be a seeing canoe. a small room, and it looks like it's a canoe floating in a square in the center, maybe? Yeah, the Man, mouse this is wheel. one screwed up river. <laughs> on Firefox, I can't drag and mouse wheel at the same time. Yeah. Huh. I see myself on a black screen. Yep, me too. Same here. Uh, you guys do not have light sources. Hold on. It's dark in the... I know it have been with dark, so it must be something else. No, I, seriously, I thought that was a trap that we just sprung. And I'd be like, wow, they even trapped the rivers here. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, there we go. So I don't have a token for the the monster yet, or the your companion robot. And since you can fit six, but they are narrow, go on the outside 
on which side you are on. So I have a row of people on this side and a row of people on that side. Uh, I'm probably one of the heaviest characters, so I think I should be in a boat, not with the Warforged. <laughs> <laughs> probably smart. I said we put all the heavy characters in one boat, and then the lightweight characters can just circle that boat as we're traveling. <laughs> <laughs> well, the irony is, is I, I don't know. Jeff, if I you're talking to us, I don't hear you. Yeah, like one gnome in each boat is good, but I mean the four heavy people in the front boat probably move one of them to the back. Well, the Warforged and his friend is in that one. I, yeah, they, they weigh oh. twice as much as everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Then I take it back. That makes sense. Friend, is that what we're calling it? I have I'll no other word too. for it. <laughs> <laughs> now there are two. Yeah. Oh, I thought the one in red was the friend. No, that's oh, our... Um, that's our guide? N no, that's the other guy, right? The the one in oh, the second the book? gladiator, that's, that's right. That's the gladiator, right? Yeah. The mini, the mini me is the mechanical companion. Yeah. yeah. All right, our guide is in the first boat, which makes really good sense. Cause yeah, we... I was just like, why is our guide behind us? <laughs> <laughs> and ears has eyes, so... I guess the question is, are we traveling north or south? You're traveling south. And we're aimed perfectly at that rock. The one rock in the middle of the river. My page is refreshing. You ever played it was freezing up. You ever played the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text adventure from Infocom? Can't say that. I, have. I know about it. I know about it, but I haven't played it. There was one puzzle where you had to aim the boat directly at the rocks, so then the uh, the automatic go uh, um, pilot would kick in and and correctly guide you to safety. Spoilers. <laughs> For a 25 year old text adventure. You just got to figure out how to aim yourself at the ground now and miss. Yep. Yep. All right. Why is this not loading? Come on. I tried, but you said I couldn't have that item. So, um, Earth has uh, perception survival out, out the wazoo. So there's going to be tasks on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Azaka can, will be the guide. If somebody else wishes to help guide, that will provide advantage. Or somebody else What's can What's the role for that? It is a survival role. And I can her do that. survival is not the best. So if somebody else wants to be the guide, she can assist Ooh, in that case. I can totally be the guide. I Everyone should follow my leadership at all times. Now, we if, are going to die. If you are guiding, How about ears guides? Or keeps an eye out for Let danger. Either one. Yes, if, if you are guiding, your passive perception does not come into play for avoiding dangers. If you are foraging and getting food, your passive perception won't come into play for getting danger, so there will be tasks. So do you need me to roll my survival? No, I will be rolling them. I will just need the okay. bonus once my page loads. What the heck? Then I, can, on. Then I, I can keep an eye out for things if I'm not guiding. My survival is a plus six. Same here. Mine's a plus four. Yeah, mine's a plus four. So. I, I'm not meant for the outdoors. It's a one. I'm, I'm almost I all of us excellent survivalists. 
I took the scout archetype, so you know. Yeah, but That's perception, yeah, paying attention to like dangers and stuff. Um, I'm not so good at that. Is anyone actually would be paying attention? Ears would. Oh yeah, ears would. Uh, I took the wildly flail at things skill. Sorry. Ooh, that's a good skill. <laughs> Haven't hit anything yet, but hey, I can flail at them. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> that's what the skill is. You, you have to get the hitting thing skill if you want to actually hit stuff. It's weird how D&D differentiates them like that. Yeah, what's up with that? Guys, I maxed out my damage skill. Yeah, but what's your hitting skill at? Uh, very low. <laughs> <laughs> but when you do hit, it will hurt. It's it's that's called the awesome. uh, Dragon Ball Z method, where you just <laughs> spend, you know, six uh, six sessions aiming, and then finally hit. Yeah, like round after round after round. Just look, I'm I'm gonna make sure I get that hit. Yeah, but then well, I turn into Krillin, and I just hit him, and it's like, oh, I did absolutely no damage to you. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my page trying to figure loaded. out. Oh. Did you crash? It froze up on me. Nothing was clicking, so I had to. I tried refreshing it, which didn't work. So I had to like kill it and reload it. Damn you, Craig! So, I'm trying to figure out if my survivalist is rolled into um, the bonus already or not. It says you gain proficiency in the nature and survival skills, and your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses either of them. Okay, so uh, what's what's it saying your skills at? So it says for survival plus six. But What's then something like sleight of hand is also plus six. Yeah. Wisdom, yep. wisdom is plus two. That's then, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. It's included. It's, is it, your sleight of hand is up because it, your dex is probably higher. Is your dex a plus four? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yep. So, uh, so you have the same. Yeah, you, yeah, that's why they doubled the uh, the thing on it. So you have a six. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I see. So, so like my insight is plus two, but I'm not trained in it. So, okay. So I see it is doubled. Yep. So yep. it's it's a plus six instead of a plus four. Okay. Yeah. And remember, your proficiency bonus goes up. It'll go up to as high as I mean, upper level eventually. plus six. Yeah. It's going to, you know, it's going to keep on doubling like that. So eventually you're going to be at like a, with a plus two, you'll be at like plus 14. <laughs> no, it doubles to the attribute, not the proficiency, right? No, it, no his, yeah, his ability bonus. actually doubles the proficiency. Oh. Yep. So it doesn't double the wisdom, it doubles the proficiency. Correct. Yep. Okay. And since proficiency always goes up every like four levels or something. Yep. All right. So the first day, we already know that it's raining. Who is Azaka helping guide? I think me. And what is your survival bonus? Plus six. Okay. So this will be with advantage. Plus six, and you guys are traveling at a normal pace. Oh. Okay, so that's simply expertise. Got it. Now I got to see if I can actually scroll this. It would be nice if there was an easier way to just like right click and select what map the players were on. Uh, oh, because you have multiple rows. Yeah. So that you have to horizontally scroll. Hmm. Okay. 
create a blink map sort of in the middle so that you can move it to the middle and then move it over. That's what I did with That's a good idea. Yeah, I might have to do that a couple times. A refueling map. Just make it really scary. So we think it's actually real and terrible. Tarask. Yeah, put a Tarask in it. I always oh, like using uh, Tarask in an adventure where it's a uh, it's the the life source of a city. It's been uh, contained, and uh, people now uh, harvest bits of it for uh, for the survival of the city. Yes, there's a setting like that. Somebody kickstarted, I think. That was interesting. Yeah, well, there's a uh, friend of mine. I remember in Neverwinter Nights when they developed the whole make your own dungeon thing and added it on. Uh, he basically used the starting story, and the first thing you encountered was an ancient red dragon. You're a first level character. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> With friends like that. <laughs> yeah. At least the Tarask you could run away from because it'll be like, oh, something ran in from me. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the, the Tarask was uh, completely subdued. Um, magically, uh, you know, uh, held or slept or whatever, contained in some way. I forget the details. It's been a long time since I ran. But uh, the, uh, they basically mined it for, uh, for food and building uh, materials and whatnot because it, you know, has that strong regeneration. So they could just, you know, dig into it to pull out the flesh and the bones and scales and whatnot. Yep. Damn it, I'm still shy. And then, of course, you'd have, you know, crazy religious groups that wanted to free it and, you know, various political machinations in the, uh, in the ruling class. One thing I don't like about Firefox, you can't easily scroll this. Chrome lets me just kind of mouse wheel while I'm dragging it, but I almost have enough of these blanks in between. <laughs> It doesn't help that each time I place one, it switches me to that map. Mm. Okay. So if you scroll, into Port Nyanzaru, you have a party token. Oh. I think I see it. Now your intent yeah. is to move down the river. Right. Indeed. The river Tiriki? Tiriki? Yes. Tyrikai? The river Tyriki. Yeah, because then we were going to walk over to Mesro afterwards. Ah, okay. So we're going towards the X? Yeah, that's where her heirloom is. Supposedly. Okay. Uh, just just a suggestion. I mean, we don't have to follow by it, but I would suggest that we stay away from the skull and crossbones. That's <laughs> just me. All right. So the first day, you guys start traveling early, and not much happens. The next morning, it is another rainy day. But down close to the ground, not much water actually gets to you. It's just kind of humid and hot. 
Um, also, who is getting I'm sure food? occasionally we'll be splashing each other with paddles and whatnot. Or are you eating uh -huh. rations, or is somebody foraging first? We should totally be foraging for fish. We're in a river. Just uh -oh. remember, if you catch the last fish, throw it back. Otherwise, you might get turned into a fish monster. Twillin can forage for food. But at least then we'll know Opetow returned. All right, yeah. now, what are you guys doing for water? I believe we're on a river. I think we're not supposed yeah, to. Yeah, we were told not water. to drink it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a purify water spell. Oh, he does. Yes, we're we're on a river. We're How good. much water does that purify? <laughs> all the water. Um, <laughs> all the water. <laughs> you, you purified the whole river. <laughs> Here, hold on a second. It's some massive amount that uh, is more than we need for a day. I'm assuming um, we still, well, we're told like two gallons per day per yes. person is what we want. All yeah. non-magical food and drink within a five-foot radius sphere centered on a point of your choice within range is purified and rendered free of poison and disease. Okay. So, all the water. <laughs> <laughs> so, 10-foot sphere. Now, do you guys have, like, a barrel or something to bring water into so that it doesn't immediately get diluted back into the river? We just stick all of our water containers in the canoe and cast it on that, and all of our water is then clean. Okay. But I assume we would take at least some extra supplies of water just in case something happens. Are you suggesting that I might die? Because you probably shouldn't suggest that. That's just bad, bad luck, Karma. There. <laughs> <laughs> you might have used all your spells for the day. Azaka the important has... thing to do is to keep me alive. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we'll, we'll remember that. When you make you. camp for the night, Azaka has a rain catcher that she sets up, and she has a few extra water skins for herself. So she's got enough skins to cover her two gallons a day. Um, in the morning, when you guys start heading back towards the river, you realize that you're in a like a tributary. At some point in time, you started heading up the wrong branch of this river. So while Oops. you think you're you're here, you're actually over there. But that day, you do manage to get back on track. The nice thing about taking a wrong turn on a river is that backtracking is a whole lot easier. <laughs> Yep. Oh, wait, you went two squares. Hold on. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. So you didn't get as far as you thought you had because of that, but then again, it makes sense because it was um, half a day of travel, a little over half a day of travel. On the second day, traveling through, Azaka is pointing out not um, very useful information, but you know, certain plants you can eat, some plants that she's never tried, so she doesn't know. You do see some pteranodons flying overhead in the sky, but they don't seem to bother you. Um, ears would actually, especially if we pause or something, um, take his uh, herbalism kit and study some of the plants, trying to discern their qualities and what they might be used for and confirming what she's saying in terms of what's good and what's not good. Uh, give me a nature roll. Um, we'll let you uh, be proficient in, in the roll. Which I already am, so... So add that. it again, I guess. Alright, so let me roll, and then we can do the adding... Uh, normal... Yes. So, plus another 2. So, 18. And uh, we lost somebody. Who'd we lose? I'm back. Uh-oh. 
video. Yeah, my, my internet just cut out completely. Yeah, I'll see him on the video. Okay, so that was another plus two on top of that. So 18. So this is probably while you're camping or that morning? Yeah, whenever there's a good chance to do it. And from what you can tell, she's mostly correct. At least the ones she knows are safe to eat are safe to eat. They are not very plentiful. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that is new to you guys that are not from here. Some of which she, you know, points out, you shouldn't touch that, you shouldn't eat that. And she describes, um, there's none present, but she describes like a tuber that's really good to eat and stuff. But you need to eat them in moderation. Because you'll get fat and do heart disease, or? No, because if you eat too many, you get poisoned. Oh. That's kind of the same thing. Perhaps. <laughs> Alright, it's a good suggestion. Let's uh don't don't overdo it. Everything in moderation. Right. And then on the second day. Oh, and uh as long as we're piling up water when we're purifying it, we might as well pile up our rations and food and what, because it purifies that as well at the same time. And that'll keep us from getting accidentally poisoned by something. Hmm. Yeah. Make sure our fish don't go bad on us. And we talked about the requirements for water, but we didn't really say specifically what we got. I'm just thinking, would we have gotten additional water skins in order to fill the requirements for water, or? Um, did we get two? It's a, I think that's dependent on each. I think each water skin's a half a gallon, so you'd need four oh. to have two gallons on you. And we did talk about the rain catchers, but I don't remember if we decided to buy a couple just in case. Or I think, I think we did. I think we did, too, because we weren't going to spend the entire time on the river, so we couldn't fully depend on that spells. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'll have to switch to create water instead when we get away from the river. <laughs> uh, I had two water skins on me already, so... And I'm just going to assume we updated that accordingly. I know I spent at least like 15 gold on uh, what was it? Incense? Oh, that's the bug. Yeah, the oil. bug. The, the bug oil. Or the gel, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I think we bought two rain catchers then. That sounds about right. But I know I spent like 15 gold. <laughs> So not counting Malwin, who is helping, who Azaka is helping guide, or Twillin, who is helping to get food. Does anybody not have a passive perception of 12 or higher? Does anybody have a, a bonus of anything 12 or higher? <laughs> Passive just means ten plus your your. Uh, oh, your, gotcha. Your bonuses. Yeah. So yeah, you so if you have less than a two, then you're then it's not good. Um, 
but no. The only thing I have less than a two on is athletics. Okay. So I it, have a less than a two on a lot of things, but perception and one. <laughs> so as you're traveling down the river, uh, this is midway, uh, midday roughly, everybody except Azaka and Malwen and Twillin notice movement both on land and in the water. As crocodiles. That's the thing about navigating a boat. You never notice anything in the water while you're doing it. <laughs> Navigated this into a bunch of truck crocodiles. Jeez. Do your well, job. I thought you ordered lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody roll initiative, because nobody is surprised. It's like a rubbery chicken. Okay. Um, I'm supposed to roll initiative with advantage, but I don't see a way of setting that, so I'm just going to roll it twice. Oh, I need to select myself, don't I? Oh. Yeah, I forgot to select myself. That'd be why. Really? We're we're all terrible people. Twenty-two. Oh, it took the second one. Let's see. It... Oh boy. Ah, cousins, let me greet you in my fashion. With an axe. Well, that's better. Great sword, great sword, but close. <sighs> <laughs> All right, looks like I'm batting cleanup at four. Oh. Ooh, I wrote good on initiative for once. Oh, good. They're big crocodiles. It'll be hard to miss them. Don't worry. I have faith in myself to find a way. Is that it? <laughs> it's a lot of crocodiles. Well, there are a lot of crocodiles. All right. Is anybody not on the tracker? That would be me. It doesn't want to roll. And me. Are you? There I, I, I did roll, but I didn't have myself selected. Now it's working. All right. Or I thought I rolled. The uh, let me roll because apparently I didn't. Yeah, I don't see a roll for you. Uh, quick, everybody throw fish behind us and then paddle really quickly. <laughs> Give me a second. Yes, time for new shoes. Hey, if I were a cannibal, could I use purify food and water to cure disease? <laughs> so funny. You know, it took me a moment to actually think about what you said, and I was like, wait, what? How does that even work? And I was like, oh. What? Oh, boy. Um, we're, we're kind of sitting ducks here, aren't we? We are. I knew we should have gotten the armored canoes. Yes, the armored canoes. <laughs> With spikes. And outboard motors. Outboard blenders. I figured we all looked like we needed a little bit of exercise, so I decided not to, you know, point out the ones with outboard motors. <laughs> oh, God. What are we going to do here? I recommend rolling your attack. And then roll damage, and then let the next person go. 
I think if we repeat that a number of times, eventually the encounter will end. Um, okay, I believe I'm going to not do that. But. Yeah. <laughs> Are we good to start? Okay, I'm just going to have to roll manually because it's not letting me roll anything. Are you... Do you have a browser open in the same browser that you're using for... Uh... So oh, let me roll room. for you. Or was that your roll? Hold on, I don't think I wrote it. It's a natural right. 20, so good roll either way. You got a plus two to initiate. Yeah, so uh, 22. Yeah, so hey, with a natural 20, you can go first. It accepted my roll for, of that nine. I'll just change it to a 22. I, I, I'm just going to check my character sheet. Uh, I'm going first. Yeah, it let me roll for you on Beyond. So I don't know why it's not letting you roll. Did you update your... Yeah. Um, plug-in, maybe? I'll, I'll have to check it, but I'm not going to do it right this second, so uh, I'll just roll out of the character sheet, I think. Well, I can roll for you if you let me know what you're doing. Hopefully not dying. Uh, no, the the only thing I can do is throw a javelin at one of these things, so that's what I'll do. Alright, which one? Uh, I'm aiming for the one in the water that's kind of in our way. Okay. That will be a miss. Yep. Ears. And I'm done. Um, I'm assuming... Well, I don't know how big the canoes are in terms of is there any reasonable way to hide? In a canoe, not really. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, all right, so I'm going to ready in action when something comes near me and one of my friends, I'm going to stab it with my rapier because I won't sneak attack because rogues. All right. Nexus? Um, are they actually moving towards us? Or yes. are they just sort of... Oh, okay, okay. All right, well, let's... Uh... Let's uh, let's play around here and see what we can get. Um... Oh, what is my sticker warning? That's my oh. advantage. Oh wait, hold on. Uh... Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm going to catapult it here. Say what? Use catapult. Um, and... Meow, meow. I, well, no, I'm going to start it from... There. And it shoots a straight line through that. Uh, but it only, it only hits one. So basically, the first one to fail, it's saved, gets hit. Okay. Now here, let me... What's the saving throw? I kind of pulled. Ah. All right. Uh... It's a deck save. Uh, cast. Cast not in deck. I'm casting it a second. All right, DC 13. So the first one gets an eight. Oh, so he will be the one that's it. And he will take 16 points of damage. Let's see how tough these guys are. All right, it snarls and thrashes. Okay, so interesting. All right, so the first crocodile is this one here. It's got a move of 20 and a swim of 30, so. It 
it's going to move to there and start by biting after Azaka. That's not adjacent to ears at this point? No. It's okay. sort of. I mean, you guys are both in the same spot for the most part, so side by side. If it is, I would stab it at this point with my ready to action. You may do so. It's missing right. anyway. So. Okay. Let's go here. Uh, no advantage, because why would there be? There we go. 19. That is going to hit. 22 points of damage. All right, so it starts swimming up and lunges out of the water to bite at Azaka, and you manage to... Stay down! How do you kill it? Oh, um, as it lunges for Azaka and opens its eye, I just drive uh, the rapier right through the uh, roof of its mouth and through the brain, and then quickly pull it back so that it sinks. And that it does. And then the next one is this one here. It is going to move to there. And it's got, uh, it's going to go after the small gnome. Sorry, no, the human, Malin. I've got a question about spiritual weapon. It says it's a bonus action to cast it and do a melee attack with it, or is it a bonus action to cast it and then a regular action to do the melee attack with it? It's a bonus action to cast it. When you cast it, it automatically gets its first attack. And then every turn... Okay, so I can do a regular a action plus cast spiritual weapon? Yes. Yes. But then you can cast another spell unless it's a cantrip. Right. Your other action can't be a spell unless it's a cantrip. Okay. I guess in that case, I will Sacred Flame with a cantrip. Uh, one of the... Uh, no, it's not your turn. He's critters. biting at you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said it was my turn. No. Never mind, then. Yeah. I will be using my reaction to hit it with a sacred weapon. I think I can do that. You have a reaction? Uh, well, it, it moved within uh, range of me, didn't it? Maybe I'm misremembering. I'm a war caster, so I get some special options in combat. Maybe I'm incorrect about that. I can use my reaction to make an opportunity attack to cast a spell. That's if but it I, moves away from oh. you. Ah, okay, never mind then. Never mind. I will sit here and get eaten by a crocodile, doing oh. nothing to stop it. Because it apparently you. I can't do anything yet. It misses you. Taban. That happens. Taban is, is kind of uh, frustrated that he's in the very back of the boat and there's nothing down there. And he's like, come on, get us closer, get us closer. And he pulls out one of his spears and throws it at this crocodile. And misses. Twillin, you are up. Uh, Twillin's going to take out a couple of sling stones and cast magic stone and throw one. At, uh, I think we'll pick uh, this, this one here as the target. Uh, let's see, I've never cast a spell before. Maybe this will do the attack. Ah, uh, it did. Uh, 19 to hit, 7 points of bludgeoning damage. And which one did you throw at it again? 
Uh, okay. Ping it again. Okay. Seven damage. You hit it, and it thrashes in the water and continues to charge at you guys. As uh, as he's doing it, Twilin is shouting, "Go away!" Um, make an intimidation roll. Okay. I got my boots. I'm good. See, we need that bard. Looks like. Oh, never mind. I think I'm about to be jumping in a crocodile's mouth, so you might get him sooner than we thought. <laughs> you only got a six. Yeah, you it doesn't go away. Um, this one over here. It's not a small creature, so I can't talk its language. It's going to swim over to there. And... Let's see. Even it'll be Thrakod, it'll be Twillin. Twillin, it bites at you. Okay. Sixteen. Am I getting that hack of opportunity for that? No. Yeah, I don't uh, have. That seven. is my AC, so it does hit. All right, four piercing. So it hits you for four piercing, and you are grappled. Okay. You are clamped down in its jaws now. Um, I'm recording damage in the red circle. On my token, or what? Um, you could record it on Beyond. Okay. Yeah, I think there is an option that's on by default of... Actually, no. It's out of sync. Uh, I see a damage button, but... Oh, wait, let me enter something in the field first and before I click it. Four damage. Oh, it worked. Okay. No, mine is not staying up to date. Yep, and now it's okay. showing the damage on the overlay on Twitch, too. Okay. All right, and the last crocodile. It's going to move up there and bite at ears. Nah. Some duck. Does a 21 hit? <laughs> Just. So 12 piercing damage, and you are also grappled. Ouch. Ow. Now, now I'm torn. Which one do I smack at first? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. Hurt. So the one it hurts. This... And being grappled, your speed zero. DC is a 12 to escape, escape DC 12, and it ends if an effect moves you away from the grappling creature or vice versa. All right, Fixer, you are up. Uh, am I capable of shooting them even though they've kind of got people grabbed? Or does that do anything? The grapple, you can shoot them. If it kills okay. them, it ends the grapple. All right. I'm going to aim for that first croc that's on the left side. That one there? That, yep. That doesn't have me grappled yet, just so you know. Oh, it doesn't? Nope. No. The uh, two on the right. Have, uh, then I'll do the top one on the right, then. Okay. <laughs> how's how's the ten work? Uh, ten misses. <laughs> okay. And they're such big targets too, man. I, I think I need to smack my crossbow again. And it's holding still because it's grappling him. I mean, it should be so much easier for you to hit. Than... Oh well. Yeah, I I kind of give the uh, crossbow a couple smacks. 
All right, and last is this croc here. Pretty good time to charge up. You're going to grab the dead crocodile and drag it off to eat it? No. <laughs> we'll move that out of the way, though. It goes he up. just tramples on it. Oh, right my, it's fine. my boots, my boots. It goes up that way and bites at Azaka as well. Uh, it hits her and grapples her, too. Okay. Uh, next is Malwin now. Hey, look at that. I'm going to go after that uh, that one of the farthest north on the right-hand side. And I am going to first hit it with a sacred flame and then summon a spiritual weapon to uh, smack it around. Okay. I wonder if I have a token for a weapon. What does your spiritual weapon look like? I think it is probably a big hammer. That uh, that seems to fit to your, doesn't it? Yeah, but your radiant damage of one is always just glowing. Well, it needs to make that DC 14 save to see whether it takes that one point of damage or not. Tyr's weapon was a spear. As a a uh, bolt of uh, radiant energy uh, slams down towards the uh, crocodile from the leaving behind a floating hammer that proceeds to smack the uh, uh, the crocodile right on its snout, uh, right. trying to free uh, my uh, pinned companion. It makes the save, so it doesn't take the one point. You can control that hammer now, so you can put it in whatever square you wish to cast it. Um, that's a good spot for it, as it's smacking that crocodile. And it looks like it probably hit with a 19 for 7 damage. Yep, 19 does hit. You seem to cause it some pain and distress, and it kind of uh, begins thrashing with twilling. Bad there. crocodile, drop it! Drop it! Azaka is going to try making a... Oh god, oh god, I don't want to die roll. Let's see. <laughs> so grapple does not cause incapacitated or restrained. So she's going to attack it. It doesn't? It says in the description the target's restrained. Is it? Well, in the description for the bite that you uh, that showed up in Roll20, it oh, says yes, restrained. Oh, yes, target is restrained. Okay. Ah, so restrained. That's a different story. So restrained. Yeah, a restrained creature, their speed becomes zeros, attack rolls against the creature have advantage. The creature's attack rolls have oh, disadvantage. disadvantage. Uh, the creature has disadvantage on deck saving throws. Hey! He has disadvantage against your Radiant. Doesn't look like that mattered. It rolled an 18 both times. Unless that was 18 plus its modifier equaling an 18. <laughs> no, that's double. Yeah, that's the double roll. So yeah, the crocodile is not restrained. The people that are grappled are restrained. All right, Azaka is going to attack twice with her scimitar. They do look pretty outgoing. With disadvantage, her first attack gets a 7. Her second attack is a 17. She hits for 5. All right. Uh, that brings us back up to Thrak. Actually, let's take a break here. I need to put my daughter to bed. Okay, what time are we returning? Um, say 8.15. Alright. Alright. Okay. See you in 11. Put up the break screen. Alright, great sword time. Hmm. Um, I'm going to leave the mic, that way if you guys want to chat to talk to chat, you can, but I'll leave everything live there. Uh, 
How long of a break are we getting? Uh, till 15, he said. So, okay. 10 minutes. So, Steely, I had this really weird idea while I was on break. In sure. that, and at next level, too bad it isn't that yet. I would have just turned <laughs> into another crocodile, right? And then I would have said, I would have said, this gnome is mine, and pretended to gnaw on you. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I'd be a fan of that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know if Nexus would go with that one. <laughs> just remember, it's all going according to plan. You are not actually being eaten. Yeah. Just. <laughs> so she gets to play the role as the person getting eaten. That, that, that's not blood. That's just red food coloring. You're okay. <laughs> But I can't turn into a crocodile until next level. That's that. 
I just think it's hilarious that any D20 sort of game I'm in, I can I can usually but oh, nine times out of ten can't hit anything. So me and the buddies, we end up playing a different game. Adds in everybody is some sort of a god. So I chose a luck god because the dice is a D24. You know, increase my odds. Yeah, that didn't quite work either. You know, 20 to 24 is a crit, and I don't get anything above a 10 still. And it has 24 sides. Alrighty. That was loud. Oh, and we never got guy, you never got your camera working again? Um, maybe he's not on. Oh, I forgot. I can actually like mute my camera screen. Yes, yes, you can. That's what that is. There's a button for that. No. But then we can't watch whatever show was in uh, TV and behind you while you're away. So sad. Yeah, that. Or that a game. You got to be careful with that. What, copyright? Yeah, automatic copyright strike detection can sometimes pick up things like television. Makes sense. I think on the, the window, it's so small. I just realized, um, should we be including shields in our armor class while we're on a canoe? Assuming you take it out when your battle starts. I'm just saying, uh, it's built into your AC calculation. I'm kind of wondering if I should just check it off. You should get bonus AC for having a canoe. <laughs> no, Dude, how can really you be holding it while you're on a canoe? Wish. No, the canoe is your shield. You totally have bonus oh. AC for having a canoe. So, so that means it's, it's like an extra giant shield. Mm -hmm. Half cover. Yeah, I'd almost say no. I mean, you could have it like out and nearby, but equipping a shield still takes an action. It's a moral. Well, it's like, like, oh, it's kind of like that feather that Dumbo has, you know. Still got hit. Your emotional I'm support shield. Worry about it, but I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> well, you gotta do like the Viking ships. Just put your right shield right on the outboard, not oh, outboard, yeah, but yeah. you know, on the side. Yeah, um, but you don't get to like wield it then for benefit. Mm. Changes your canoe from a plus two to a plus three then, <laughs> for protection. That is. <laughs> <laughs> I would give that benefit to the canoe though if somebody's trying to attack it. <laughs> My canoe has plus two AC. Hey, if you're swimming in the water and you try to hit somebody that's in a canoe without hitting the canoe first, I think you're gonna have a hard time. No, I I, I think you have a good argument for us having cover while in the canoe from things coming out from uh, in the water. Yeah. <laughs> 
What didn't help me though. Not with a twenty-one. No, no. <laughs> That's a crocodile that has run into canoes before. It knows where the crunchy center is. <laughs> it knows where the tasty bits are. Yep. Am I sensing crocodile tears? Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, it will be amusing Ooh. if we get killed by these things. Let's see. A rowboat. I know it has an AC and hit points, but I can't find it, but... Oh well. It's not important at the moment. It's probably in the salt marsh guide. It might be. Alright. And you wouldn't let me get that tower. It would have come in so handy here. <laughs> oh yeah, break out the tower in the middle of the canoe. Let's see what happens to the canoe. <laughs> well, yeah, you set it right next to it so it crushes the crocodiles or shoves them out of the way. And then uh, creates a nice, uh, solid place for us to uh, park our canoes for the afternoon. Uh. All right, looks like we're all back. So let's start the second round with Thrak. Mm, I don't see Arca. Uh, I lost Aranat a while back. I, I'm. It's trying to connect back to everybody's cameras, but it's not. So I. I ain't messing with it. Oh, Call for some back reason, again? I'm on two. So, will a 19 hit the one that has a hold of the gnome? The one that's basically just to the right of me. Yes, a 19 will hit. Hold on. The... Your video is showing my video for some reason. Uh-oh. Oh. The if you uh, click the, the pin, if you click the pin in the upper right corner of the video, it will stick that one in the upper left corner. No, I mean on the the stream itself for some reason. Let's see if I can fix that. Is it filling it in because he's not in the call? No, it's fill he's on the call. It's filling well, yeah, it but he's not in his video isn't there. Yeah, none yeah. of us can see him. Yeah, he's not on the video call. I see him. <laughs> You're the only one that can see him. Oh, so you uh, might have been two calls. Oh, That's it could be. It could be a separate call. Yeah. That that would explain why there are two of you. One for each one. I'll I'll hang up and you just call me back. How's that sound? Sounds good. I think he might have tried to rejoin the last time we played that call. Could have. I guess it's possible. There we go. There he is. Hey, we see you. But on the stream, it was showing me because I had it set so that the window titles needed to be similar instead of match exactly. So when he dropped, it just looked for the next available VC window. <laughs> I see. Okay, so I uh, had a 19, so that'll be 12 slashing plus 4 fire damage. All if right. they have any... Uh, and you were going after the Dislike. one that was grappling ears, or the one grappling Twillin? Or the, uh, the one grappling which... Twillin. Okay. Isn't that the one I hit earlier? So Twillin, this this crocodile has like latched onto your arm and upper chest area, and it's kind of trying uh -huh. to thrash you about, and then it goes limp and lets go and sinks down into the water. Okay. Good thing we're not using your rigor mortis rules. And that's going to bring us to ears. 
All right. Well, I have ears. Thinks his best chance is to just stab at it, even if that means a disadvantage. Uh, which do I have an easy way of setting that? I don't know. Well, we just know it's disadvantage. So if it thinks I hit, um, let me poke it with the rapier. Ah, there we go. I can select disadvantage. Uh, oh, sweet. Now the question is, is 17 enough to get it off? Oh. Seventeen damage? Yes. As it has hold of one side of ears and swings around with the repair from the other end and pokes at an eye. Precious eye poker you. Yes, seventeen it does, it lets go of you. Boop, 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 boop. Blubs down into the water. And I would like to uh, can I really move in the can canoe? You can move uh like back a bit. Yeah. But it'll take an acrobatics roll. DC will be a twelve. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to use my uh, cunning action to disengage, and then and then try to move back because I'm not doing well. You say if you fail, you fall in the water. If you fail <laughs> by more than uh, let's go with eight, the canoe tips. And there are no uh, critical failures for skill checks, so I can't fail by more. Okay. Let me you go hit the 12, though, so you can move. There you go. Boop. All right. That's, that's me. All right. Nexus, you're up. Uh, all right. I know that one is hurt, but he's not grabbing anybody, right? The the, the cool one closest to us. No. It's the uh, the one, right? Uh, and he's got a hold of our guide, doesn't he? The other one. Yeah, this one up front has a hold of the guide. <laughs> this one in the other one does not. Oh, I could do another catapult. Maybe I'll just level one it. Um, yeah, the, but I will place it here and then have it go backwards. So that even if the first one does miss, a good chance it misses the first one, good chance of hitting the second one. Um, but I'll do the level. I missed the origin point. Oh, it's um. Okay. It should straight line it and then um, hit that one first if possible, and then the second one. Level one. Did it roll or no? I didn't hear, no, it didn't I hear didn't it. see a roll. There it goes. Um and I might let me see what's hmm. uh, ten. I might re roll that damage as well, actually. I have a point I can use to do that.
You get to re-roll something? Yeah, I can re-roll. Uh, let's see. What dice can I do? Is it just one per thing? Let me see. Hold on. It's the empower spell one. Um, you can spend one spur three point to roll up to three of the dice. Oh, I can reload all three if I want. Um, I will not reroll all three. I will just let's see. Obviously, I got a six on one of them. Uh, I will roll two of them: the three and the one. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So. Better overall, so 17 total for that, then. Yep. All right, let me make his deck save. Crocodile number one saves. Oh. Crocodile number two saves. Oh, of course. Damn. I know. <laughs> Darn. And here I did and pressed, made, made the uh, damage all impressive and stuff, and it was like... Uh, all right. They did some bullet time evasion there. They did. You know, the damage doesn't technically come into play until after the hit or not, right? But, oh well. Yeah, I mean, would I have been able to uh, just not use those points knowing I missed? Yes, actually. Okay, so I did not Probably use the did that after, that. yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about it. All right, so we'll... Right. Did not use the point. Stupid automatic damage roll. <laughs> Does the catapult hover above the water? It it doesn't like hover per se. It literally pulls out of the water and shoots forward. Okay. And and then uh, and then basically until it hits something. So it probably just hits a tree or something in the way and then then stops there. All right. So crocodile number one is going to go after Malwin again since you're on that side. Sounds reasonable. Am Seven, I dead? 17 to hit. Uh, let's see. My armor class is an 18. Though I think that is using my... Sh but that's without my bonus for being in a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's able to get up and over the canoe. So it is going to hit... For four piercing damage, and you're grappled. Well, that's just naughty. <laughs> Taban. Let's see, does he have acrobatics? Acrobatics is dex, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does not have... He is not confident enough that he will be able to get up there. However, he does have a couple more spears. So he is going to throw a spear, possibly two. So first spear. Uh, 18 will hit for 11 damage. Which one is he targeting? That oh, one. There. That one. Yeah, the one I had already hurt. Okay, so. and he doesn't really have a clear shot at the other one, so he is not going to throw a second spear. Two spears. All right, so that brings us to Twillin. I uh, Twillin doesn't have a clear line of sight of that one, so he's not going to do anything. The pass. All right. Let's see, crocodile that is dead. Um, everybody in the first boat, and Twillin and Nexus, roll me perception check. Perception. That's persuasion. Oof. Ew. No, not good. <laughs> this is not good. We're were you trying to find your boots? We are we are we yeah, are just I'm... staring down the 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 gator, that's all. Yeah, we're not so... paying any attention. Thrak, 
Twillin and Malwin can still roll. Eighteen. Uh, uh, we is a passive per. Oh. No, this is an active perception. Okay. So even though I'm uh, restrained, I can still roll my perception. Yes, you may. It doesn't have you by the head. I got a nineteen. Okay, so Nexus and Ears don't see it, but over here, um, there is some movement under the water, kind of swimming downstream towards you, and there's a pretty dark shape underneath there. Oh, wait, I'm not restrained. You killed the thing. Can you ping it again? Me. Thank you. It's okay. south of us in the rapids. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of coming through the rapids, and you guys notice a, a quick glimpse of maybe crocodile scales or something sliding over the rocks but still slightly under the water there coming down that way. Alright. That crocodile is dead. So Fixer, you are up. Uh, do I have a line of sight on that front croc? Yes, you do. Since you're in the front of that boat. Then I will attempt to shoot it. Oh, how's a uh, 22 work for you? <laughs> I don't like it. I <laughs> refuse. No. You do slam the sma- a bolt right into the crocodile, uh, probably right underneath the neck as it's kind of trying to thrash Azaka up there. And that crocodile goes down. So it's out of Anisha. So Azaka did not notice anything. So she, thank you for getting it off of me. Uh, Malwin, you are up. So there's a critter under the water over there, but I can't actually see it. Right. Not yet. You know something's over there. I guess I'm going to move my spiritual weapon over to here. Okay. And um, can I uh, hold an action to smack something with it when it pops up? Uh, not with the spiritual. I don't think you can ready a bonus action. Like can I just it. hold my action and then oh, take my out. action when it pops up and then move it over and smack it? No, you can't delay. Yeah, yes, but couldn't you turn a bonus action into a regular action and that would just be your action? Finding out there. Let's see. No, you can't turn. You can't change actions into other actions. I think the best thing is just uh, ready a cantrip to attack it when it surfaces or with something. Yeah, okay, you, you I would like trip. to do that if I can. It Does... may not surface. It may be going after one of the dead gators because, you know, it wants those for a pair of boots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then that's okay. The spell you ready, you actually cast now. And if you take damage beforehand, you have to roll concentration to keep it. But the if it's a level slot, you expend it now. Cantrips, obviously, you don't expend, so... Well, I will ready my uh, my cantrip uh, spell. Sacred flame. To, uh, okay. Yep. Uh, Thrak, you are up. Unless I can cast that blind of the thing in the water. I think you have to see your target. It, it doesn't get cover bonuses. Is it? Uh, you know what? But it's you, can see, you can see a shape and an outline, so I'll give it to you, but I'm going to give it advantage on its saving throw. It gains no benefit from cover for the saving throw. Hmm. That's special in uh, what? Hmm. Then, I mean, he's doing obscurement, not cover, right? Sacred yeah. flame. Yeah, this is a visibility obscurement, not a cover. Yeah, roll the uh, roll the DC. See if it matters. Let's see what it is. Okay. Uh, 
it's you shooting a bolt of flame into the water. Yes. <laughs> Two of these. Sacred flame, thank you very much. Uh, it rolls the same thing for both, so it takes three damage. Uh-huh. Ooh. That's tear for you. Okay. And uh, My turn. we'll say with that hit that it's not actually moving or taking an action yet, but it does surface from under the water. Ooh, in that case, can I... Uh... Oh, no, I can't move that hammer far enough. Big-ass crocodile. Yeah, that's a big-ass crocodile. Oh. Go Judah. Ah, a big one. Yeah, I think I can only move the hammer 20 feet. Yeah, it's 20 a yeah. crocodile. Oh, look, my uncle's here. Wave. <laughs> <laughs> Thrak, do you wish to take an action? Uh, yes, I am going to use a, uh, uh, let's see here, I'm going to use a Cure Light Wounds on, well, our tabaxi ran like a scaredy cat, so I'm guessing he's pretty hurt, so I'm going to rather, go with him. Tabaxi is rather bleeding. Okay, uh... Ah, there we go. I'll let you sort out that damage. Undamage, undamage. Ooh. Which will bring us to ears. Uh, seven hit, right. uh, hit points. Nice. Feeling better. Thank you. Um, that thing doesn't look pleasant. I'm going to ready an action to shoot it with my short bow as soon as it comes next to one of my allies. Okay. Nexus, you are up. Um. Um, let's do this. Let's uh, let's just do a cantrip on it. For... I will use chill touch. That's a good one. Wait, um, would it? Uh, well, not chill touch. <clears throat> would the frostbite? But I don't know. His are, his are natural weapons, aren't they? Because it says has disadvantage on next weapon attack roll. Would it count as his teeth count as weapon attack? Yes, I think so. Should. Okay. All right, cool. Then yes, I will do that. Just to make a DC 13 con. It might be easy enough. He's big. He's probably got a good con. But we... Oh, ouch. Yeah, okay. It's a 22. Does it take half or anything? Uh, if it's a cantrip, probably not. I'll save the target. Probably team, just to avoid the slow. Uh, no, yeah, it, it, it doesn't do anything on a fail save or on a pass save. So, no, it doesn't. Okay. Let's see that. Crocodile is dead, so Taban only has one more spear, and I don't think he has the ring. No, not easily. Hey, he hit one of them with a spear earlier, so that spear should be floating up in the water a little bit, marking where that last dead croc is, so you can, you can get those boots. I can't. Twillin, you were up. Uh, you said that these are 10 foot squares, right? No, they're 5 foot squares. Oh, okay. Uh, Twill and cast Fairy Fire. Centered on. Uh, used to make a dexterity save. Does it have to. Uh... Hold on. Hmm? 
I'm giving it a, a color here because it has fairy fire. What color is your fairy fire? Is it purple? Uh, in this case, I'd probably make it something that would stand out from that. Yeah, purple's fine. All right, what's the DC for the save? 12. And, okay, dex. Cool. So I believe everybody attacking it now has advantage? Yep. Okay. Uh, the crocodile comes up. Let's see, it's got a speed, swim speed of 50, okay. Uh, it's going to go there. Convenient. It accidentally bashes its head on my uh, hammer, yeah. knocking itself <laughs> unconscious. And I shoot it with an arrow. Because that's, that triggers my ready action. You may shoot yep. with an arrow. And you have advantage. I will do that now, please. Boom. 16. A 16 does hit it. 16 points of damage. All right, it seems unfazed as it kind of lowers its head into the water and oh boy. raises its snout as a uh, in a knocking action from up underneath the canoe. And it needs to make a DC 15 strength check to capsize the canoe. Oh, boy. oh that's not going to end well. And it fails. <laughs> Whoops. It, it's the hammer. It yeah. tries to go up, and the hammer is right there. It's like, Duh, what, what the hell? <laughs> First time it's ever encountered a roof. <laughs> All right, well, that's one. The second one, it is going to bite at Azaka for its second attack. For a second, I thought the second one of these. No. Oh. <laughs> Okay. We didn't yes, know the Zaka. invisible one coming up from behind. Uh, oh, is the Zaka dead? Misses. Oh, thank goodness. Whew, that is so oh, holy crap. It I kind know. of opens its head, its maw wide and turns sideways and goes to snap into her leg and she kind of takes a quick hop backwards. And it's a good uh, thing she was protected lonely. by the canoe. Yeah. She was very well protected by the canoe. Fixer, you are up. Um, I'm going to do what I do best and hit it with the crossbow. You're all charged up now, right? Um, uh, hopefully the smack still carries over to this round. That looks smack-tastic. With advantage? <laughs> yeah, you even need advantage. Roll your advantage well, just in case you crit. Yeah, you, can. Yeah, you might crit. Oh, right. That. Yeah. All right, you still do 12. All right. Azaka, she... Uh takes a, a deep breath, and she's going to take two swipes at it with her scimitar. First one, she gets a 22. Oh, she has advantage. She gets a crit. Nice. For <laughs> 11 damage. Oh, that fairy fire worked out well. And her second oh, yeah. attack. Uh, also a crit. <laughs> Holy crap! For seven. Jeez. We chose the right guide. The crocodile <laughs> is still uh, there, kind of making its threatening crocodile noises as it's opening its maw, getting ready for its next one. And Mal, when you're up. 
I guess uh, first I'll hit it with my hammer. Uh, I've got advantage. So. Uh, 14, does that hit? 14 does hit. And I think it's... Let's see... Yep, it's a plus four, so... Ooh, that's nice. That is 12 damage. And then I will also hit it with another uh, Radiant Bolt, so it gets to make another DC... 14 save. This is a deck save, right? Uh, yes. Makes a 14. Aww. Okay, so just the 12 damage from the uh, hammer. Thrak, you are up. As we start the fourth turn now. So I'm going to make the step forward so I can get close enough to hit it with my... Do I have to lean into the water to hit it, or is it back above water? Um, no, it's above water. So moving forward, okay. you need an acrobatics check. Oh, this is going to go horribly. <laughs> However, since you only moved one space, the DC is 8. Oof. So I fall into the water and still accomplish my goal. You fall into the water. Yes, you may still attack. Uh, does swimming have a disadvantage or anything? It does, but the problem, the question is, is it deep enough for me to actually be fully submerged? Yes. It's seven feet deep? Yes. How are these things getting to us? <laughs> Crocodiles can float. Apparently. Technically, well, actually, I, I'd actually... I, I, I would have disadvantage regardless. So, all right. It, cool. evens, out, it, it evens out yeah. with the fairy fire. So, straight up roll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we make with the flailing again. Yeah, <laughs> ten is going to miss. Uh, ears, you are up. Uh, I think I want to stab it in the head. So I'm going to move up. Let me do my acrobatics. You are fine. Somebody in this uh, group better have prestidigitation. I'm going to stab it with my rapier. Uh, 15 hit. 15, uh, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, 15 hits. 16 points of damage. Do you have anything else? That's what I have. Well, no, in terms of turn, I'm going to use my disengage action and continue moving back to my spot. <laughs> okay. Hop, hop, stab, hop, hop. So you, like, hop forward, stab him, hop back. It's all good. Yeah. All right. Nexus, you're up. Uh, this guy's a big guy, so sure, let's throw another second level catapult. Didn't catapult okay. concentration and you maintain it? No. It's instantaneous. How how badly beat up is it looking? It's looking beat up. That's fine. Okay. Can reroll damage too if I need. Alright, DC thirteen dex. Yes. It Ooh. fails. Oh, do I want to reroll that damage? Oh, one, two, three. Sure, I'll spend a point and reroll three, uh, three d eight. Uh, 
Oh, much better. Look at that. So six, 22 points of damage. The uh, giant crocodile kind of uh, growls and does that that high-pitched scream as it kind of thrashes one last time and then slowly stills and starts to sink into the water. Woo! Yeah. I will use my spiritual weapon to help support its tail so we can hack it off for dinner. <laughs> Can you also heal our guide who uh, got bit by one? Sure, I can do that. But, you know, this is a time-sensitive thing here. we got to get it before uh, it floats and disappears forever. All right. Who's injured? Everybody raise your hand if you've been eaten, eaten by a crocodile. I think our boat's good. Oh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fish the one in the water out of the water. What, you want me to get this big one? <laughs> if you spend some time, you can easily fish the crocodiles out. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we can't put them in the boat. What are we going to do with these things? You can't just fish them all out. We can get our spears back, so that'll help. I'll drag them to the shore. We can park on the shore and harvest. Uh, okay. They can be... Uh, salvaged for food, yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll park to the shoreline. Drive them out. At least, apparently, a decent pair of boots. Anybody lose more than half their hit points? Uh, I did, but I got a bunch of them back. Yeah, I think the scout... I'm not sure how many hit points she has, so... But I think she was the most hurt. How's our scout doing on hit points? Uh, you're on uh, mute. Yeah, you, you're, you're, I, I am you're waving your hand, but we're not hearing anything. Oh, yeah. You don't look fine. You look all bloody. Give Is me that a, all crocodile blood? Give me a perception check, Mr. Mal, Miss Malwin there. No, Mr. Malwin. Mr. Malwin, thank you very much. I got a 15 on perception. She doesn't really look bloody at all. Oh, well then, okay. Look at that. You thought she was all injured. We've got our our guide is way better than that. Uh, fair enough. Now, back to these crocodile tails. You know, I wonder if mm. I cut them up with my flame sword. Ooh. If I cook the meat as we as I do it, you know. She had crocodile? That way, that way we at have nice crocodile steak. <laughs> Purified, probably. It would be better uh, than raw. Slightly. I, I will set up a camp so we can cook them properly, though. Just in case. I'm just wondering <laughs> if I could put this over, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, two little sticks and just roll <laughs> the handle with it on. <laughs> it cooks <Nice>. itself. <laughs> Kebab from the inside. Mm. Is is setting up a camp to cook these? Is it is going to like cut into our travel time? No. Whoa. Is it lunchtime anyway, or probably so yeah, midday? We have absolutely okay. no destination in mind, really. So, are you in a big hurry to get nowhere? We have a destination. We have a destination. Yeah. What are you talking about? Um, uh, Ears would like to take a closer look at the um, big crocodile. See if it's, you know. Has uh, actually. Let me think. What's gonna be? Are these like yeah, sharks? Sure. Are there interesting things in their gullets? That's what I'm thinking. It's you actually. Send the gnome in to explore. Uh, uh, gonna cut, slice one open. All right. Slice so, the big one open. In preparing, I'm assuming you're gonna salvage as much meat as you can from these. So you're cutting them all open. Mm -hmm. uh, the regular crocodiles don't really have anything in them. The giant one, however. Uh, I'll try that again. Uh, also, meanwhile, are the arrows recoverable? Um, oh, the bolts? Says they didn't flee. Mine aren't. What's... If only I'd prepared locate item for you. 
Is there an actual rule for ammunition? Yeah. It's a, I thought it was a survival roll or something. No, it's usually like you get half yeah. back if you make... Yeah, it's like a survival roll or something you get half back or something like that. Is that a 5e? Um, I don't. It could be. I don't know. I have so many rules in my head. <laughs> yeah, that's that's usually the problem. Oh, Remember, hold on. teamwork. There is something. Arrows search the battlefield. Uh, what is this? Roll twenty. SRD five e fifth SRD. Um, you can use a weapon that has ammunition property in range. Blah, 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 if you have one. Just the fire each time you attack with a weapon, you exceed on the drawing from a quiver, blah blah blah. Um, you can recover half your expended ammunition by taking a minute to search the battlefield. So okay. there looks like it's no roll, it's just hmm. so I shot two arrows. I guess I get one back. So you get one back. Okay, I stocked up well, but you know. Because apparently a quiver is only a pound, so no reason skimping on that. All right. So, what's the what's inside the big one? And I would like to pull its biggest tooth also. All right, so inside the big one, you find Let's see a live gnome. <laughs> I, I, I think we'll need to write a book when we get back. You find... Um... Ooh, that's a good idea. I wonder if that uh, Volo's uh, book has anything about giant crocodiles. Oh, I was talking about cooking methods, because I really think those flame stored <laughs> thing... <laughs> I can use my spiritual weapon to uh, tenderize the meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that, you know, spiritual weapon, tenderize, or catapult, you know, slam in the rocks. Inside its belly, you find an unidentifiable humanoid that has been mostly digested, but there's a bit of it left. Um, mm. it's, it looks like in some spots it was having trouble breaking through armor, and underneath that armor there is a small pouch. Uh -huh. And in that I'll pouch... Examine the pouch. There is a set, a pair of painted glass dice. Ooh. And a malachite ring inlaid with electrum. Yeah, I could definitely use a new set of dice. Uh, I wouldn't mind having one also. I can share. Let me, uh... <laughs> Let me check to see if they're magical before you guys uh, start uh, fighting over those things. I will, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll detect magic on it. Casting it as a spell slot or a ritual? Um, I, I can just uh, wait. can I do rituals? I don't think I can. You can listening. if if you have a ritual spell casting. Yeah, I don't uh, think spell. sorcerers do. No, sorcerers don't. So uh -huh. I have to cast it as a spell. So I will cast it. Strangely enough, that's something I don't have. They are oh, not. Oh, you know magical. what? I've got. Uh, I've got dice. detect magic and can the do dice it. or the ring. Well, if you want. Yeah, neither the dice or the ring are magical. Okay. So yep, they're just cool dice and a cool ring, and nothing else within uh, sixty feet is uh, magical either, or whatever it is. Nothing other than what you guys are carrying. 
Okay. And as art objects, well, the the dice are worth 25 gold pieces, and the malachite ring is worth 50 gold pieces. So if you do wish to eventually sell those, you might get a portion of that. Somebody keeping track of uh, the party stuff? I have it written down. Okay. As long as one person is keeping track of it all. Well, we'll use those dice um, to play around the campfire. Until we decide what we're doing with it. So we'll chill out and have a nice meal. But I am pulling out the biggest tooth of the crocodile house. Give me a survival roll. How's about the 25? You can easily get the biggest tooth. All right. Anybody else want one? Keepsake? Uh, well, suit yourself. I'll, I'll take one. Okay. I did get the killing blow. It makes sense. Can I get two of those? Yeah, you can. And you can get 30, 42 pounds of meat from this <laughs> if you wish. <laughs> I don't think I we don't... want to carry around, around that much meat. Yeah, each pound of meat you can make a meal for one person for a day. So that's six days worth of food. I don't see why not. Although we'll probably find other stuff. <laughs> and but see it while it's fresh. Yeah, you might want to eat it because in a pre-cooked state it won't last too long. But it'll save you from uh, having to forage for a while. And on that note, Thrak, make me a constitution saving throw. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, you went in the water, didn't you? Does, does, does purify food and water purify the water that's inside of Thrak? <laughs> no. <laughs> See, the moment he fell in, you should have purified the water. See? See, that's what you should. <laughs> all right so as you guys are making camp to prepare this and cut the open thrak you notice that your uh throat starts to to hurt and it, it, you're having a little bit of trouble breathing okay I spend five points to lay on hands and cure any disease or neutralize any poison that is affecting me you're no fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you throw a paladin in there. Right? I know. Actually, I'm immune to disease. Oh. You are? That's even less fun. No, what? According to my defense, I have immunity to disease due to a class feature. Oh, huh? oh there you go. All right, so you're fine then. Even less fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, divi I get divine help, uh, health. I'm immune. To, you are immune to disease. That's why oh. paladins are always popular at brothels. Uh, what, <laughs> what breath weapon do you have? Poison. Okay. So uh, I have resistance to poison as well. So yeah, you, you start to have this sore throat a bit, a bit you know, and then you kind of cough up a little bit of poison gas, and it kind of clears right up. Yeah, if the gnome hadn't gotten bitten by that freaking crocodile and then tangled, I would have breath weaponed one of the crocodiles. But everybody around me got friggin' grappled. I was like, God! <laughs> Suck it in! Suck it in! <laughs> <laughs> Don't breath weapon the party! <laughs> yeah, last time I did that, I killed the uh, hunter's pet. Oh, that's, that's not, not fun. fun. She was mad at me. I killed the thing, though. 
<laughs> well, we know who to go send in the water if we need to something out of the water. You 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 have now our uh, our official water go getter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I'm not the water tester because it will never affect me. I'll be like, water tastes fine. fine. <laughs> All right. I'm not. Before we go to bed, I make sure I heal everybody up for any damage they might have. So, yeah. if anybody's injured at all, so uh, are we, we stay here for points. the night. No, I don't I know. Think it sounds like it. I think this is cook all this uh, meat. lunch. I think what time of day is it? Midday. I don't know. It was midday. If you oh, wish to okay. smoke and pre preserve the meat, you can stay here the rest of the day. Otherwise, yeah, because that'll let the rest up. of the day. Seems like this is a good place to camp, though, because I mean, I don't think there are going to be any other predators around. Uh, we'll make sure we mm, remove the uh, uh, the the dead of the uh, crocodiles further downstream. <laughs> so we will dispose of their body parts a little further downstream. I would keep going. I'm yeah, I don't see why we going because my question is, can't we just smoke the meat when we finally camp? You can't. Yeah, we yeah. should keep for the rest of the day. We just do smoke a quick, it when we actually camp. camp. Yeah. yeah, so we'll yeah. just do we'll just do enough to have a meal, okay? And then we'll uh, we will uh, we'll um, go ahead and go further down for a little while, and then we'll set up camp later and smoke this. Over. Okay. And I'm gonna um, while we're resting. Uh, spend the hit die. If you need hit points, let us know between. Well, me. I, I have, I have lay your hands. I can. You can do that during battle. For now, I'm gonna just spend the hit die. Okay. Because <laughs> why not? Yeah. Just remember, I have to be able to reach you to do that in battle. <laughs> uh, but I can't spend the hit die in battle anyway. So. Yeah, yeah I'm at full. And we saw how well I move on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not like fighting on a boat. We should keep That's an eye out. And... Yeah. That's why I didn't move, because I probably would have just sunk like a rock. Next time, we'll make sure to dock and let you get off before we fight crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And if we see anything stirring, we should move towards the shore and see if we can get there quickly. Hey, we already know the paladin can just jump in the water and swim to the crocodiles and like <laughs> wrestle them. Go for it. Go, go, go for the wrestling well, crocodile. We should just coat the paladin in like uh, poison. And, uh... Yeah, I'm, just... I'm only resistant to poison. I'm not immune. <laughs> well, how are you supposed to build up to an immunity if you don't expose yourself? To it? <laughs> oh, is that it? And we have a warforge, so I mean, really, they should just walk on along the shore and pull the boat. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not appetizing it at all. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So you guys travel the rest of the day and set up camp. And while you're setting up camp... We get eaten. Um, yeah, you get eaten by a Gru. Uh, oh, well, time to make you care. Pal <laughs> the paladin falls in the water again. Oh, there's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, dark vision doesn't help against Gru's damn it. No. Are you leaving anything in the canoe? Are you like turning the canoes upside down and bringing them up on shore? I think yeah, up on we'll, shore. We'll bring them up on shore. Yeah, because it rains all the time. We don't want the things to sink. Okay. Yeah. Or like a sudden rise in water level washing away. If we have that people would be annoying. Who... Yeah, if we have We'd have to turn the paddle how... into a boat. Yeah, if we know pe have people that are proficient with canoes, they should know that we should pull them on shore and turn them. Yeah, Azaka would probably know what is yeah. normally done when traveling, so we'll follow her lead to some extent. She just kind of uh, tells you get them out of the water and roll them over, but if you want to bring them up into yeah. camp, that's up to you guys or not. Might as well. Uh, yeah, we'll bring them a little bit up into the camp. Keep like, stuff right dry. The camp. You know, it, it rains all the time. Why don't? Yeah, why don't we put our stuff under it or, or us under them? Yeah, that's true. Anything well, we want protected from the rain or the the the, the water. And we can put also, we should check the boats since we did get attacked by crocodiles. Oh, yeah, we we'll check the <laughs> Although, I would assume if there were yeah, leaks, yeah. Uh, we would notice. Does Does so many have men they spell? I do. You can easily take care of the boats then. Does anybody you know, have a passive perception of 17 or higher? So close. Not on me. 
No, nope, not here. <laughs> nope. All right. In that case, uh, what is the watch order? Uh, oh. I don't know. I can take the first. Uh, okay. way, uh, I do I'm have this fancy dagger that I'm going to post the description of. I am technically awake, so I guess I I can. So there'll be two people at least on watch. Uh, I'll take the first one with who who are, and then. Um, as, as long as I get my eight hours, I can recover all my spells, which I don't have a whole lot of, and no. I uh, uh, lay on hand. So, does anybody need healing before we do this whole sleep thing? Including our guide. <laughs> and no, she she kind of uh lets you know she's fine. I I am okay. Do not okay. worry about healing me. I will be okay. fine. I am tougher than that. I see. And okay. you probably only need but yeah, four first. watches, so you know, if, if fixer's on one the whole time. You only mm -hmm. need four other people. I don't know if you want to like alternate and have some take watch one night and not the other night, or what? I'm I'm, is, I'm does Fixer have a good perception or no? Plus, Fix, Fixer can't see in the dark though. Okay, uh, I guess I suppose I'll take first watch. I have well, no, I I have the I have one of the better night visions. Um, I'll take the later part of the night. That makes. I'll take first watch or whatever. It's dark at first watch, or it's probably not as dark at first watch. So it's right. probably the better one for the little light visions. Now yeah, you're in the and jungle. I'll take the one. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say I'll take the one at the end because I don't have dark vision either. Okay, so we have the one. Yeah, and I'll take the center, so it'll be the darkest part of the evening. I'll take it. So you're doing three watches then. I'll uh, take one. Yeah, we could do three with. Uh, with I could with take one after one. after Nexus. As long as the spellcasters rest first, probably makes most sense. Yeah, uh, that's why I was going to take early morning because then I'll have a full eight hours. It doesn't technically matter on that as long as yeah, it doesn't, the rest, doesn't so. matter. It just means if something happens at the very end, they have all their spells back. Yeah, whatever. I got also, enough spells. I'm not famous worried. last words. <laughs> um, I believe with fifth edition, it's just a long rest, and there's certain limitations during that period. But it doesn't do the whole eight hour thing. Right, you, right. It doesn't really your matter. Rest is interrupted by more than an hour. You have to start over, but right, something right, like that. But even uh, a combat, combat won't take an hour. Long. All right, so, is all anybody right. wearing, also before this, uh, medium or heavy armor? I'm in heavy armor. Um, Technically, uh, the right. Warforged body is the equivalent of heavy armor. Yeah, the Warforged, I don't think, has to worry about this. Uh, I've got chain mail, I believe, so I think so, yeah. That would be medium um, for chain mail. Uh, but you guys are okay. drinking your water. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that right now. Yeah, we still have the good water. So I've got four watches, fixers on all of them. Other than that, the order is Ears, Nexus, Twillin, and Thrak. I think Chainmail is actually heavy. That was medium, no? Chainmail is, I don't know about Chain Shirt. So somebody's oh, no. got a Dagger of Warning? Yeah. 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 So That's fix, handy. Fixer and Nexus, roll me a perception check. Of course it would be us. If you don't have dark vision, you're at disadvantage. And I tell everybody to stay within 30 feet. Chainmail is heavy. Chain shirt is medium. Uh, mediocre. Hence me saying I'm in heavy. <laughs> yeah. So anybody in heavy armor is uncomfortable in the rain, but it's not to the point of exhaustion yet. Not until you start skipping water on you. Alright. 
But yeah, I did a um, what, eleven. Yeah, Nexus, you don't notice anything, but fix her out of the corner of your eye. You see a um, almost like a small childlike shape stands only a couple feet tall and it seems to be uh, leaving it almost looks like there's somebody's pack over there kind of where the, all the packs are kind of set for the night type of thing and it seems to be um, like trying to creep away so you're, you're seeing the back of this thing so it's a, a very dark shape silhouette oh no it's stealing our dagger of warning <laughs> Uh, did I just catch it? Did it, did it already go near our stuff, or is it? Yeah, it leaving? seems to be leaving your stuff. Uh, I'll just I'll just watch it. Uh, kind of see what it's doing, and if it leaves, then I'll just let it leave. Okay. Yeah, it seems it's... to be creeping away. Uh, with your perception, you notice that where it is leaving from, there is an open. Path. There's a what? Somebody's pack is open where it's leaving from. Um, <laughs> would there be technically enough time to grab a crossbow and fire? Or it would hey, you're be, on watch. Wait. I would assume you had your crossbow, right? You <laughs> it's better. Fire. He's a real slacker at being on watch. Oh man, I'm on watch. Where where did I put that crossbow? It's around here somewhere. <laughs> Knew I was forgetting something. Hey, come back with my crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> I generally sleep on my pack because it's what I put underneath. I put my chain mail underneath it. I put my pack on top of it because then I know it's protected. And then I sleep on top of it. So what you, know, you, you use what it as a pillow. <laughs> what you're seeing kind of uh, in the darkness here looks to be about a, uh, I was wrong on the size, about six inches tall. Mm. Almost looks like a, a very dark uh, doll, maybe, except it's moving. It's kind of got spindly legs and long, wild hair. And what it's carrying seems to be bigger than it. But you can't really uh, tell what it's carrying. Can I Not shoot our crocodile close to tails. It, like, Maybe if I shoot close to it, like it hits the ground, it will drop what it's holding? I guess. If you shoot it, it will probably drop what it's holding. Or if you pin it to the ground, it won't be able to run off with it. You can shoot near it, yes. You can try. All right. Usually shooting it does make stuff get dropped. <laughs> if it's small enough, you could shoot a whole palisade of arrows around it, trapping it in its <laughs> pen. That might well, take longer, though. Clearly. Well, I mean, if I was aiming for it, I still missed. I don't think he has Van Helsing's crossbow, though. <laughs> he does have a repeating crossbow, though. That's kind of the first step of it. It right. fires. It fires shots of energy. Uh, roll me now an intimidation check. Do, do I see him shooting at something? Yes, you do. And if shooting is happening with the dagger of warding, wake up. Like, is this close enough to combat happening? No. Shot you're being not, fired. You're not in danger. Okay. Um, Twelve. Yes, we're being okay. protected by somebody with repeating crossbow. There's no danger whatsoever for us. <laughs> so you fire a shot into the ground, and this thing kind of jumps up, uh, drops what it's carrying, turns around, and looking at you is a very bright white face, almost like a ivory mask. I will uh, yell right. out. And then it Stealing is not nice. runs into the bushes. Mm. I'll go over and see what uh, it was trying to grab. Um, well, I will I, watch the tree line. As you walk over there, you pass what looks like your pack opened up, kind of laying on its side. And a few feet away where it was, it seems like it dropped your tinderbox. Hmm. Okay. I'll put it back and all right as you you know take your tinderbox back and you put it back where it was where it is 
Looks to be like a rough uncut gem where your tinderbox was. Ah, uh, it was buying fire from you instead of stealing it. It's a it's a more Prometheus. honorable version of Prometheus. <laughs> yeah. It's a it it that is interesting. I mean it could have just asked. Um hmm. I will we kind of need the tender box now now she's kind of conflicted like mm. we probably have a tender box each that's true uh, uh what kind of gem uh it's like a, a rough opal it's not cut it's not polished almost like not you know, hugely valuable yeah not hugely valuable Maybe worth but, 10, 10 gold pieces, maybe. Worth the tinderbox, obviously. Yeah. Mm. All right. I'll, I'll, t I'll, I'll take the gem and I'll take the tinderbox and put it kind of where she, where I last saw her at the tree line and set it down. And I'll go sit on the canoe, seeing, seeing if she... No, for the rest of your watch, you don't see it. And you put the tinderbox over there? Yeah, I put the tinderbox over there. Okay, yeah. You don't see anything, and the tinderbox stays there. And let's do experience. So for the night... Uh, also, you did other stuff. So 400 experience for the night. There is an experience thing on this thing? There's manage... Oh. Did I... Put down milestone them. Uh, what do I have for and my sheet? It should be easy to fix in the animal yeah. setting either way. Yeah, yeah, if you go to edit character, there's a manage XP yeah. button. Yeah, I just had it set to milestone for some reason. Yeah, sure. So we're start. So this is the first XP we're getting since we became level three. Yes. Yep. Okay. And I am. Are we able to oh. complete the long rest? Just to be on the same. Hold on. Yes, you can repeat the long rest. I forgot last time too. So add another three hundred. So make it six hundred. Because you did avoid being trampled by dinosaurs and stuff like that. Wait, yeah. Wait, uh, uh, six or no, seven hundred. So seven hundred now, right? 300 plus 400 is 700. Yeah, 700, sorry. Okay. Cool. All right, thanks for running. Had a good time playing with you folks. Yeah, thank you. And then... See, two weeks is the fourth. We're missing one person on the fourth, right? Carlton, you're not here. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be at Gen Con. Same here. Okay. So I'm missing two. We're missing two. And then what's after the fourth? I think oh, we six. can still play with two gone. The 18th, I'm not gonna be here. We can still play without you. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, you can actually, if you want. I'm also not going to be here for the 18th. Wandering around, lost in the jungle. Yeah, we don't need help for that. No, but if somebody wants to do a different game, a board game or something like that, you can stream on the stream for that night or not. That's true. And I will technically not be available for the first. I might. But I kind of doubt it. The first? You mean September? Yeah, first of September. Gotcha. Yeah, I won't be here for that either. Yeah, that's um, Labor Day. Uh, yeah, that's Labor Day weekend. Also, here be here for the 18th. I think. Yeah, I think that's all in the Discord and that uh, section about where we can't play. All right. Talk to you folks later. All right. Thank you very Bye. much. See you guys later. All right, thank you. Yep. So two weeks with who we're missing, we should be all right missing two. But if we miss any more than two, then we can call it off or do something else. 
also. Oh, and future. don't forget to kick Craig out. Oh, yeah, Craig, go away. <laughs> I'm glad he doesn't have a message for you when he leaves. All right, y'all. I'm going to call it a night because I have work in the morning. All right, good night. All right, ditto. Good night, thank you. All right. Come on, Craig, leave. <laughs> he likes you so much. Oh, where's my pebbles? Uh, All right, there he goes. I missed a colon on the first command line. Missing colons can do bad things. Yeah, they can. <laughs> Bye. All right, and thanks everybody in chat for hanging out. In two weeks, we'll play again, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific, unless I happen to be delayed by work, which can sometimes happen. Getting time changes soon again? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, Ooh, that's a good point. Yeah. I noticed my phone calendar actually had that, but I don't know when. Nope, Florida so got Florida recently got rid of their time changes. I don't think we actually switched times this time around. Oh, it's in October still. We got a while. Oh, okay. I wish we would. Personally, I wish everybody would stop doing time change. I'm okay with that. I don't like suddenly being, oh, I feel like I get enough sleep to for like four months. Nope, I'm still tired. <laughs> are, we, are we still live? What? Yes. Okay. Why? He didn't uh, want to say anything, didn't the live There's chat. things I don't want to say while we're live. And yeah. That's oh. what I mean. Yep, I am ending the stream now.